guess I'm going to presume that HCAM's got this. So, anyway, uh, welcome to the planning board uh, meeting for Monday, uh, February 22nd. Uh, uh, we started off with an executive session this morning, or this evening. Uh, we're now into the public session. Uh, we're going to have a couple of public hearings tonight. The most important one is the public session on uh, proposed amendments to the zoning bylaw and the zoning maps. Uh, I'd like to thank HCAM for taping it. Uh, we're missing a couple of members, and they can look at the tape to make sure that uh, they know what they missed. So that's always helpful to the board. Uh, I'm going to open the public hearing uh, for proposed amendments to the zoning bylaw at this time. Uh, this is a public hearing. We will kind of talk at them in the order that's on the agenda. Uh, we'll probably have comments and questions from, well, let's start the public first and then the planning board members. Uh, we'll see how that works on the first couple, and if that doesn't work so well, we'll reverse that order uh, through that. But it is a public hearing. We're looking to get comments from the public. We, we really want to hear what people have to say. Uh, but I ask you to be really short and concise. And if you, you know, if you just want to say ditto what he just said, that's okay. And and, and just we'll understand where it's at. It, it is a uh, uh, we've got a lot to go through, uh, but we will take the time to to, uh, to get through uh, all these. If not today, uh, we'll continue it on. So anyway, let's start with doggy daycare. Uh, facilities and I think there are copies over here for people who haven't gotten them hopefully you have in the doggy daycare John do you want to start off with a quick explanation of what we got there yeah the doggy daycare came to us from um, Mike Shepard in his office um, where um, the way it was written to us doggy daycare questions continually arise due to the changing demographics and more and more households have two homeowners working full-time jobs. The need to provide pre professional daycare for the dogs, much like child daycare, has expanded significantly. We have a couple in town that we know of these that were permitted about 10 years ago as a home business. I suspect it could be, uh, it, uh, it could be a use by special permit in some of the larger residential districts. We may also want to include the option in professional business districts as well, as, uh, although not downtown. The use could be permitted with specific conditions based on primarily on the neighborhood input, but would include limitations on hours, operations, no overnight, traffic parking, et cetera, et cetera. And, and the reason why this is brought up is that we had sort of like with the um, solar um, issue of several years ago where there was just no regulation at all. And um, we just wanted to actually put some boundaries on it just in case they, it, uh, it came up and just to, to save the inspectional uh, crew having to uh, go into uncharted waters. So um, we, we actually looked at this one second. We actually did the, uh, um, the Bay Path one first to actually give us some guidance. But um, just, you know, all of, we, we took into consideration all of those things that uh, we, we wanted to stress that there was going to be no overnight. And uh, we took into consideration the traffic and parking, the number of dogs that are boarded. And uh, if they were inside or out, and and the supervision, and most importantly, sanitation. Um, and um, if you look at the uh, at the draft article, it's um, a dog daycare uh, facility may be permitted in any zoning district upon grant of a special permit from the Board of Appeals, subject to requirements set forth in this section. The doggy daycare facility shall be located in a lot containing a minimum of three acres. There shall be not more than 12 dogs at the facility at any one time. The hours of operation, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. The, outs the outside area for dogs shall be enclosed by a solid six-foot tall fence. When the dogs are outside, they shall be on the premises and under constant supervision. All dog waste shall be contained and legally removed in a timely manner. Adequate odor control measures shall be implemented, and adequate measures shall be implement implemented to ensure that noise impacts <coughs> to the surrounding neighborhoods are mitigated, and there shall be no on-street parking. 
There should be no uh, overnight uh, care for boarding of dogs. There should be no dog daycare activity without an occupancy permit issued by the Director of Municipal Inspections. The initial occupancy permit shall remain in force for a period of two years from the date of issue, provided that the ownership of the premises has not changed. Thereafter, permits may be issued by the Director of Municipal Inspections for a succeeding two-year period, provided that the use continues to comply with the provisions of the chapter in the special permit. Occupancy permits shall not be transferable upon change of ownership. So we tried to hit all of those uh, factors that, that we thought people would be concerned with. Okay. Questions, comments, input from members of the public? Mr. Shepard. Yeah, and as was pointed out, this was my article. As, as you probably know, and, and the obvious fact is, uh, with more and more people working, they've got to provide a place for their dogs. And I, for example, bring the dog over to a place in Westboro where I suspect some of you do as well. Um, she goes over there once a week for daycare just to get socialized with the dogs because otherwise she doesn't get along with sheep very well. <laughs> On the other hand, we just came back from a vacation and all my kids got kids up in the row and there's like to give the dog to them to take care of so you got to find a place. So th this particular place actually boards them overnight as well. Um, so we did that. So over the last three or four years, we've got a lot of calls about people <coughs> inquiring as to whether they can do it. And I said, no, you can't do it. Well, why can't I do it? Because we don't have a bylaw that covers it. And, and so I, I thought, and I think Zach did a great job by, by putting these parameters on it. The, 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 you know, you can do it in any zoning district you want, but the lot's got to be three acres. That eliminates probably two-thirds of the zoning districts right there just by definition. Um, uh, the good thing about the special permit is a butters get invited to come, everybody within 300 feet. The Board of Appeals, if they're, they can award the special permit if they think it warrants it. Uh, they can also put additional conditions on it. But the important thing is if we have issues with the facility, we'll send them back to the Board of Appeals, and the Board of Appeals can rescind it just as quickly. Uh, so it isn't like, you know, you got it now, you can do anything you want. That isn't the case. But it was more about having something there so that we could regulate it. Otherwise, it's chase the people that set up these little ones here. But yeah, it was my thing. Okay. <laughs> Sir? And, uh, name and address so that we get that for the record. Yeah, we will be here with Ben Bryant. Just yeah. a couple of questions. I, I follow the gist of it. Yeah. So on the, on the last paragraph 11, it says the initial permit shall remain in force for two years as long as the, uh, the premises ownership has not changed. Does that mean even if there's violations within the first two years, if it still stay in force? So if, yeah. if there are violations, as there is with any other special permit, they'll be referred to the Board of Appeals. The Board of Appeals would be a public hearing, but as they're invited. Did you just say? Yeah, and, and the Board of Appeals can say, okay, you're all done, you can't do it anymore. Or they can put additional conditions. Uh, the, the big point is the, the direct about it, everybody that has any direct involvement gets to say and has an opportunity to do it. That, that was the big so point. So a complaint would be enough to... A, a complaint would, a complaint would be, require an investigation by us. Yes. We, we'd look at it. We thought it was warranted. We could issue a cease and desist order. The, the dog place could would then have to stop. Uh, they could appeal it back to the Board of Appeals, and the Board of Appeals could then hear all the stuff, and you get your say. And okay. There's, so a lot of, a, there's a lot of protection. Just to follow on, yep. so normally yep. the way these things are written, you don't have to put all that down in writing in the bylaw of how that process works. Well, it's, but it's all in there. But that's how zoning works. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes? Hi, Kathleen Walker, 11 Lane. Yes. Um, my concern with the daycare and the animal shelters is the factor of the noise. I live on Indian Brook. And I'm retired, and if I hear dogs barking, <laughs> I can yeah. my quality of life is going to really tank. So I know it says here that you ensure that the noise impact will be mitigated, but I just wonder, really, can you realistically do that? <coughs> part, part of it is, is, is you know, the, the biggest parameter is the size of a lot, the three-acre lot. Um, by definition, that's going to put it away from a lot of people. The ideal scenario... Is, is a place that over in the agricultural district where there are no other neighbors. Uh, our dog, for example, goes to that Linda's doggy playland in Westboro, right on the corner as you go into Westboro. Fortunately for her, she has no neighbors directly around, so there's nobody to complain. No harm, no foul. Ideally, we'd have something like that. If 
they applied to the Board of Appeals for the special permit, and the neighbors would get invited anyway, and they say, I'm really concerned about the noise, then the board can make them do additional things to placate the noise, like keep them inside all the time or whatever. But the important thing is just get it out there. It doesn't automatically guarantee anybody gets it, and there are controls, so... So it doesn't automatically guarantee that whatever they say is good enough for the noise control is good enough? What's the Board of Appeals in there doing the special permit? It would be the authority on it. And I suspect your question on noise is exactly what the town meeting discussion is going to be about. Okay. And keep in mind, this comes up again at town meeting. Should the planning board vote to forward this, the, the same discussion will come up at town meeting. Was, was, let me ask the question a little bit. Did Zach look at other ways of mitigating the noise? I mean, I see you had some of these that uh um well you know it, it's um I, I also bring my daughter a couple of days a week i go to um uh a, a small place up in uh just over the upton line and um what i what i've noticed when i bring my dog in anywhere from 30 to 90 seconds maybe tops There'll be the, that she probably has about a dozen dogs, maybe fifteen dogs, and as soon as my dog gets in there, she'll she'll bark a little bit. They'll bark a little bit and find out where the pecking order is, and then it all comes down. And there's really no, there's there's not much until the next dog comes, and that's why you have to get your dog in before nine. You know, it, it's you know, from seven to nine. It's just my experience has yeah. been that dog owners don't opposite, notice yeah. dogs bark. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Dog owners yeah. notice yep. it a lot. Yeah. Okay. So. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Roland Janbergs from Turnbridge Lane. Um, I do a lot of walking in the area. I, I like to walk. Uh, the Ashland Animal Hospital is one of the areas I used to walk around a lot. They are fairly removed from anything else. They're kind of in a business district around and building it around. But you can hear those dogs barking for a long distance. And they wind up barking not for a couple of minutes establishing pecking order, but for hours at a time. So much so that, that I know that walking along the I, I, I'm walking along the river here, this is this is uh, I guess I, I guess it's the Hopkinson River or Sudbury River okay. or something. But uh, I'm walking one side of the river and coming through town and walking back, and the whole time I'm hearing dogs barking. Now, it may be different because it's an animal hospital. Maybe they're barking because they're sick, but it is noticeable. Yeah. Um, I also have a question about uh, the 7 to 6. Is that weekdays only or is that weekends also? Weekdays. Weekdays only. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think this we had. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. Mm -hmm. well, go ahead. Bill Proctor, I'm the animal control officer for the town. Um, to answer your questions on the barking, as far as the, the veterinary place, you've got dogs that are basically kenneled there. They're in cages. Okay. So now they're fence fighting. They're, you know, so it, that's a whole different thing than what these people would have. Um, we have dogs in town, and there's no one that hates barking dogs more than I do, believe me. <laughs> but we have single dogs that bark. They would also, Mike, wouldn't they be, wouldn't they, they fall be under my laws? Them. Wouldn't they fall under my, my laws, too? Yeah. So there would be fines involved. If there's barking, there would be, um, you know, we would investigate, same as the police would investigate. Um, you know, we're not going to let them bark. Say we, I mean, that's, like you know. Sure that's what we Thank you. I mean, Here in, of life issues. Oh yeah, no, and believe me, I, I understand. But like I said, believe me, the dog barking is one of the worst things that we have to control. And single dogs sometimes are worse than you know many dogs. So you know, I don't think it's going to be a problem with that. But it's you know, with the kenneling, like at the animal hospital, first of all, there's probably 20, 25 dogs down there. They're kept in kennels outside. They've got outside kennels. They've got inside kennels. They're, they're bar. You know, it's a. It's just a whole different operation. That's okay. that's why. We're yeah. You know, okay. I mean, we're talking. You know, a handful of dogs in a in a place playing, basically. Okay. Let's uh, kind of move along. Any yeah. planning board members have questions? Well, I, I just have a comment that um, if that is supposed to be Monday through Friday, it, it should be specified. Um, because weekends are a whole nother story when people right. are home and want to sleep in. And even within that, I, I really have some questions on 7 a.m. That is awful early for 
Yeah, so we have to drop off here dogs. We have to drop off before work. Well, they might drop off before work and up until a certain hour. They have to have an indoor area where the animals can be contained, mm -hmm. so they can go out and start barking at eight or something. But so I, I'm, you know, I'm just anticipating that that's the kind of thing that might bar the neighbors to start to hear dogs barking at seven so, a.m. It's so great if you're going. To the work intent of three was to make weekends. Yeah, that's right. That's or weekdays. Right. I, 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 yeah, okay. we thought it was weekdays only. I thought that's okay. Uh, Frank, point about procedure. Uh, I guess you guys haven't seen this, uh, John. Uh, we got feedback from uh, town council uh, that addresses some some concerns, mentioning different things here that we just got uh, like we, a minute ago. So yeah, we didn't get that. Uh, so. we, we we will we will be meeting again on the exact final wording. Okay. You know, this is tonight. We want to make sure we get everyone that was notified from the public so we get that input for sure we now have town council's word too and you know we will uh, we'll, we'll merge all that in probably at the next meeting just because otherwise we'll not get through here tonight at all well, about the specific one I have a question yeah. uh, go ahead Mr. Shepherd um, sure. appreciate the work um, I, I you said earlier that uh, people called you and asked you about having doggy daycares and said because it's not in the bylaws you can't. Um, isn't that like a kind of a <coughs> negative? Probably 10 years ago, we had a guy come in to the Board of Appeals and I said, you can't do it. So I'll go to the Board of Appeals, they'll fix it. He went to the Board of Appeals and, and uh, because we didn't have it in the bylaw, he needed a variance, a use variance, which was really hard to get. And the Board of Appeals said essentially, no, we're not going to give it to you. 10 years ago. Uh, the day after, I got a call from the chair of the board of appeals. He said, and during the course of the hearing, the neighbors were all far. This this thing exists today. Everybody knows, I think, where it is, and we've never had a complaint about it. Um, he says, why don't you have them apply as a home business, which is kind of a stretch, but because at the board of appeals hearing. There was no neighborhood opposition. In fact, the entire neighborhood came out and said, let this guy do it. I said, we'll, we'll set you up as a home business. Knowing at the time I did it, I was pretty new at the job, but I was also willing to take a chance because, again, everybody loved the guy. And uh, we're still doing it today. We've had zero complaints. Okay. And, uh, but I didn't want to make a habit of doing it that way. Yeah. That's okay. the only other alternative. Okay. Right. That, was the, that was the only thing I wanted to mention is, I mean, it, having this spy line here gives us a better control of, of having a doggy daycare facility, whether it's done legally, not legally, it would now have to be done legally, and we have the control, and that's why we need to move forward with this. Yes. Sorry to bother you all. Um, does any Is anybody driving an Audi A6? Mm -hmm. I wish I were. No. <laughs> no. I'll take it. Next time. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's walking so much driveway. So I was going to say, somebody not driving, driving it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry for the interruption. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> Let's uh, Can I have get a question. Oh, go ahead. So I, I'm, I guess, a little confused. If we're trying to solve a problem of convenience and supply, or if we're really trying to address through sort of zoning all sorts of odd questions that we might be asked to feel. Yeah. You know, it seems like a combination of the two. Yep. And it's not, it doesn't sound like a big impact currently to government service, right? It's not occupying well, well, people in time. All I can represent is the, the, the growth of this little industry has, has grown substantially over the last 10 years. Um, whereas somebody goes out and hangs up the shingle and waits for somebody to complain, and then I have to shut them down. We end up at the same place, the Board of Appeals. Um, so this is a way where we can establish uh, parameters, size of the lot, uh, numbers of dogs, so people know going in, and we have better control. It's the same reason we have sign bylaws, uh, setback requirements for houses. It's just another thing. Uh, but without it, we don't have that. Control. That, that gentleman over there said it perfectly. Uh, without it, it's. There wasn't a need for this 10 years ago. Currently, it's allowed in commercially zoned areas and not allowed. No, it's not, not allowed. No. It's not allowed, not allowed at all? No. That's the whole point. Not no. So what, then my next question is, why are we proposing that it be allowed across the, the different Well, areas? I think essentially I said, you know, I said uh, residential districts, maybe not downtown. 
and Zach, who who's had a whole lot of conversation over this when I wasn't present, you know, I think rightly decided said, well, we ought to we ought to make it a minimum size lot, three acres. There aren't a ton of three acre lots in the whole town, let alone there are none downtown. Mm -hmm. Um, so it eliminates that right of way. A lot of the industrial districts don't have three acre lot. Um, so the idea of the three acre lot was, ideally, when the Board of Appeals looked at it, the guy who proposed putting his enclosure over here, and it would keep it away from the residential district as much as possible. You know, the ideal place for this kind of thing is buried out in the back of the Pratt Park or some other place. And, and, and you know, because you know, it, it, you know, it does make noise. We're trying to make controls to avoid that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, uh, if we can, oh, yeah, go ahead. we have the ability to put in here setback requirements. We that could. Vary from we could. Because, I mean, an example, I'm on three acres, and I my driveway is 10 feet from my neighbors, so okay. having three acres isn't any good if it's right in the front. Well, but, but, yeah, you got to be careful going down too far down that road, because... That's what the whole idea of the Board of Appeals. The Board of Appeals will put conditions on it. Mm -hmm. If you came with a proposal that put yours right on the edge of your driveway, mm -hmm. the Board of Appeals wouldn't buy it. They'd say, put it over here in the back of the woods where nobody lives. That, that's what the whole idea of the special permit is. You know, this gets you in the door, and if you want to put it over here on your three acres, and it's going to inconvenience some neighbors, but you have the ability to put it over here on the other part of the three acres where it won't inconvenience anybody. That's where they're going to tell you to put it. You still hold the upper hand. No matter how you look at it, the board still holds the <coughs> upper hand as to whether they get it and where they put it. Okay. Let's, uh, let's move on to animal shelters. Uh, I think one of the reasons that uh, we're talking about this at this point is uh, I think they have is uh, which is on Rafferty Road is looking for a new home or might be forced to look for a new home in a reasonable future and so that's kind of I think what is going on with that John do you want to yeah. introduce this one yeah this one um, yeah Bay Path actually um, maybe I'd like, I'd like to have the Bay Path people introduce it because that's how they because I basically I probably should have had I had uh, is that all right with you which so go on, right yeah, ahead. Would you like to introduce it? Because I, I probably should have had Mike do it the first time uh, on this one, because um, if the proponent's here. Sure. Uh, so, uh, Susan Rostick, um, resident of Hopkinton, Baker Lane, and also the president of the Bay Path Humane Society. Um, Susan Rostick and I have been in town now since the late 70s. We've been on leased land that we get from Eversource. Um, we're at the point now where we need to make a decision on how to grow. And in order to do that, we need to determine <laughs> excuse me, if we can stay in town or whether or not we need to look someplace else. And obviously the inability today to identify land that's zoned in town is a real limitation for us. And so that's why we wanted to see whether or not it would be possible to um, have land zoned in town to give us some options. And How many people, I'm assuming people are familiar with Bay Path, either because you may have adopted a cat or dog from us or because some... Um, you know, perhaps you've had family members who have volunteered with us. If not, I'm happy to give a, a little bit more history about the organization. I think we're all set for the history today. So I note that almost the same type of conditions <coughs> are right. from and one to the other. And that, and that was that, that was the benefit of, of, of doing the two of them at the same time. The other the other main aspect of Bay Path is that, um, and, and actually, if you'd like to talk about it a second, is that they they are our dog pound. And um, for the town to uh, build its own uh, dog pound right now, I, that would never get through town meeting. We just spent a lot of money last year. Tomorrow, I think, we're signing off a... Uh, but we'd be obligated to if we didn't have one. Right. right. And yeah. so yeah. that was one of the other... reasons. daycare elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But anyway... Well, if you get your kids off. Tell us a okay. okay. So... As far as the kenneling goes for the town, um, we used to, years ago, we kenneled with Bay Path. The state came up with new regs, said we had to get, a um, little quick history, we had to get three bids, so we ended up leaving Bay Path because it was a cheaper option to go somewhere else. Well, by the time it became down the road many years, um, the cheap option wasn't there anymore. 
we were paying outside to board our dogs for a year, somewhere in the vicinity of about ten grand. Okay, so um, Liz came back as manager at Baypath and was willing to take Hockington back. And right now we are looking somewhere in the vicinity of. For what we're paying for rent, three thousand dollars. So there's a big savings right there to us right at this point. If we had to go and build our own kennel, because right now there is nowhere else for us to go. I've done a little research. There is nowhere for us to go. With all the new state regs, we have to bring anything we build up to state specs, which means air conditioning, heating, staffing, um, you know, the whole nine yards. We're looking at huge money. Right now, I'm a one-man operation. I get paid 20 hours a week. I can't staff a kennel. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, to be there to take care of them, they're already on the premises. So you're probably looking to build the facility for the town, probably $100,000 minimum to build us a, a facility. So to keep them in town is a big bonus for the town as far as I'm concerned. Um, that way there we keep rolling along with the animal control kind of the way it is, uh, not having to go to, you know, more... Plus, they're willing to help us. They back me up when I go away. Um, numerous things. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, public comments, questions. Go this, ahead. I mean, the same Ditto. concern, and now we're talking two of them, and this would be overnight. And I'm just wondering if it could be zoned in a commercial place. I mean, I understand the need, but if it could be zoned in a commercial place, I mean, the residents of downtown aren't really... Well, that, it wouldn't end up in a yeah, downtown. It, it, if, I, if, I, if I may answer that through the, through the chair. The, um, the way we wrote this was so that um, one of the uh, one or more of the uh, town parcels might be available. Because the, they can't afford to buy any uh, enough land to build this. And so what we were looking at, at is, is maybe... Maybe something at Food Street, maybe something at Pratt, maybe something at one of the other parcels that we own to give them enough land or lease them enough land. And that's sort of how we wrote it to, to try and um, be more that. So this would not be in any neighborhood of anybody's neighborhood or anything like that. So that's how we, it, we, we're trying to do some kind of a partnership is the way, is the way that I was looking at it uh, and I believe the rest of the, uh, the committee. Okay. Yeah, Mike? They, uh, I, I, I'm not sure it was called Bay Path yet, back then, but my father uh -huh. Bob and I built the building. I, I, I didn't know ours was back in the 70s. I'm not, I guess I'm old. Well, the first one was, 19, <laughs> first one was 1984. Well, that's what, that's what it was. Yeah. But, but anyway, what everybody's going to realize, and hopefully town meeting realizes, it, this is kind of a, a public-private partnership kind of thing where, you know, true, the town could go out and do this on their own, and, and I believe the town is required to provide a kennel. And so we'd have to go out and, and build it and fund it and staff it and do all that stuff where we have these people where if the town could find a parcel for them and say, look, we'll lease this to you for so much a year and the, the deal is you'll take care of our dogs up to so many, kind of like what they do now. They're great at it. And the, the upside is we get to see them walking them around. And uh, the... the uh, it, it's just a good thing for the town to to do it the other way is really expensive for the town and and the whole idea as as uh, he pointed out was if we could find a town parcel that was was big like Pratt or okay. over like where the new schools go sir that we could get into Dave Paul Seven Middle End Drive this is a similar note to the first one I know you're going to work on the wording later but the point number two all animals to be kept indoors at night should just specify the hours for what night is that's a good idea. Okay. <coughs> that was easy. Okay. Planning board members, any more just comments? Just, I have a question. What's the current, just looking at the parking and having passed by Bay Path and wanted to go in and listen to those cars, what's the current square footage? Because I've counted 10 to 12 cars 
on a Saturday sometimes. Of the, the parking itself? No, of the bill because it's... Oh, it's about 1,700 square feet. It's about 1,700 square feet. Um, our parking situation is very limited. We know that in any kind of future facility, we need to allocate a lot more parking. Um, so we have a limited amount of parking that we can allocate. Um, part of the situation is because of the construction that's going on further up on Rafferty Road. Right. So people can't park anymore on the street the way we could, let's say, a year ago. And so that's why you're seeing a lot of congestion when you when you go into the shelter itself. But we know that with any kind of future facility, we need to have a minimum number of parking spaces. Okay, because this is three per thousand, which sounds light in comparison. You know, you'd only require five spots if it was 1700 and I, that's no, no, like a future facility we need to have much more than that we're looking okay. at something closer to 7500 square feet for a shelter of our size that adopts out a thousand plus animals a year what we've got today is not as someone attested to it was built in the 80s it's, it's been a great building for us but it's not it's frankly doesn't it doesn't reflect the way you would design and build an animal shelter today so where, where is the parking requirement in here? It's in the two. In front of the front. Number two. Oh, no, here. Oops, I'm in the wrong. I'm in the wrong. Never mind. I've got my dogs confused. Okay. Okay, we'll kind of sort through that. Elaine, you got an action item to. Oh, go ahead. Barry Rosenblum, yep. Tim Bryant. On, this, on the park in the three spaces of a thousand square feet of gross floor area, is that of the constructed building or the kennel included? Uh, we're going to have Elaine research that to make sure that we get enough parking requirement. Zach talked about that quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do the chair? Yep, go ahead. The chair, Zach. Um, it doesn't necessarily affect current animal shelters. It, it affects where new ones could go. No, actually, if if, if you um, look at the way we wrote it, it, it this is it's set up as more of a public-private um, entity. It's th there are so many ho hoops that somebody has to drive through that really only Bay Path can do this one. This is not for multiple overnight. For profit. This is not. For, it's a not for profit. It's working with the town. It's there are so many. Um, th th we we really s made this pretty specific. This is not to encourage an another one coming in. Well, it's, it's what it, it's, no, Mr. Chairman. It's what it says. It's, yeah, it's, only, it's only by the town it's or a charitable or non profit. So right. yeah. it's not for a. Uh, but by the same definition we had earlier about. What's doggy daycare if there's no bylaw? So if someone has uh, boarding horses or um, any other sort of dog walking enterprise or anything like that, if they have animals overnight, this is just one specific thing, but by definition, does not affect other things. Does so this? Does this? No does encourage. It, is this for? No, right. does, does this apply to horses? No, no, no. no. It's, uh, <laughs> it's in the animal shelter. <laughs> I, I, well, says animals I, doesn't necessarily say dogs. So that's well, animals, we, cats, dogs. So I think you know you can change maybe we need to, cats to, and dogs, but that's basically what it is. There's not many stray horses. We get a few. We had the the stray cows. Yeah, cows. Those damn stray horses. Okay, <laughs> I think I think we're ready to move on to the next one. Okay. Next one is the hotel. Hotel overlay district modifications. Yeah, and this one um, at the public forum, uh, uh, Elaine wrote, um, the suggestion was made to eliminate and modify certain requirements for a hotel in the hotel overlay district. It was adopted in 2009, um, and two places in Hopton were allowed to have uh, hotels. And, and what happened was the um, uh, only two hotels were allowed, one at each side of 495. And the hotel had to include an 8,000 square foot functional meeting room space, a full service restaurant, health club facilities, either the same building or on the same lot. Um, and and the, the town was, it, we also put in that they were looking for a high, high end hotel uh, for function space for Hopkins events. And, and with the, and this, everybody had good intentions. Everybody put in exactly what they thought would be a great hotel. However, 
um, the high-end hotels aren't building what we were asking for. An 8,000 square foot uh, function uh, area holds uh, seats over 600 people. Um, I don't know too many people that throw 600 person weddings anymore. Uh, even my bat mitzvahs for my kids weren't uh, that big. Yes. Well, what's the problem? It's bigger. Yeah. So, so what we do? So Step we do. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and so, so there was. We were wondering if there was another reason why a, a high end hotel wasn't looking at Hopkinton. Well, we we put a few of them here. So we uh, did some research. So we, Couple of the members of, of Zach that are here now we actually did some did so a lot of research and came up with that that most of the hotels um, have uh, fifteen hundred square twelve hundred to fifteen hundred square foot um, meeting rooms and um, you know multiple ones can be put together if people if, if the people wanted more but to ask for eight thousand square feet and the other ones we were looking at were uh, the the full service restaurant you know so. Um, you know, and then to get into specifics of, of, of how and where the west uh, the restaurant should be, and um, what was some of the what was the oh, other? and the health club and the health club, yeah, that that uh, and I believe if, at some point people wanted that outside, uh, <clears throat> not just guests could join, and and hotels really don't have that. They have they have health they have health facilities, you know, and, and that kind of thing for for the guests. But uh, again, I think we were trying to. Um, design a hotel for uh, and okay. Dice. Let's open it up to public comments. Want to see? Oh, Mike. I just want to really um, uh, endorse uh, what John was saying and and how much effort went into the analysis for this. Um, there was a lot of real research of analyzing uh, what type of places are being built and. Uh, what type of facilities, and then obviously a lot of us, if we're lucky enough to know they go to a hotel, you know, recognize that even, you know, Hilton's and Marriott's and all that, they don't have health clubs. They have, you know, three or four Nordic tracks and, you know, a couple things like that. Um, uh, they have, yes, some, the really high end have full service restaurants, but they just, you know, and there's no more, you know, gigantic spaces. There's convention spaces and all that. And, you know, given given what we're facing, and we all read the papers and we all understand the situation, we know what's going on in town um, for the tremendous impact that we're seeing on the schools with the, take out the adjective, Legacy Farm, and, um, and the impending, essentially almost certain loss to substantial value that we would, are going to lose with the EMC. Um, the idea of trying um, to make um, some of the commercial development in the city uh, more attractive uh, in the town, uh, considering you know the quality of the town and and the type of, of entities that would like to come here, you know something that that would give um, these types of organizations um, a little bit more incentive uh, and tailor the uh, bylaw more towards the type of place that people would want to build. I mean, it just seemed to make complete sense to to uh, you know, drop okay. it down a bit. Obviously, we've here from 209 to 215, 2016, and nobody's come. So, you know, part of zoning uh, is to avoid problems, and part of it is to encourage positives. Mm -hmm. And um, this one hasn't, um, it may have avoided problems, but it certainly hasn't encouraged any positives. Okay. As we're here okay. many, almost a decade Go ahead, later. Go ahead, sir. Dave Paul, 7 Meadow Line Drive. The, the zoning looks fine the way it's written. Just a question about the uh, most concerned about the height of a hotel building. Would that be covered in another bylaw? Or it is. Go ahead, Elaine. How many whatever, stories? It's, whatever the zoning district that it's in, uh, the height limit that's already there. Okay, this mentions a hotel overlay district. Is that a specific area of town? Yeah, it's. Um, Near the highway? Yeah. It's uh, parallel to the to the highway. Uh, covers covers part of Elmwood Park. Covers part of South Street. Covers part of Lumber Street. So, like, what would be the, the industrial? Height? How industrial many floors could it be in that area? Do you know? I think well, the height limit in the industrial B district is forty five feet. So like uh, four and a half stories. And in uh, on South Street, it's sixty feet. Okay. Uh, unless it's within a certain distance of Haywood Street. Okay. Thanks. And, okay. Does that need to be mentioned in this at all? Though, or it's no, it's, 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 it's the same. It's okay. just an overlay. Same as it already is. Yeah. I'm just wondering. 
Clifford Kistner, 86 West Main Street, Hopkinton. Um, I'm wondering, if is the language also associated to the changes that are, are being proposed for residential use as well? Is, the, is that what, it, what I'm reading in here now is, is that the changes that you're making towards, um, towards that, the, from the zone B to the EPBD, that, oh, that's, no, the so that's, 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 that's the next. We're not there. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. That's not this. You're, you're getting there, right. sir. Right. Yeah. Um, I have a, a couple of questions. One yeah. is name and address. Name and address, please. I'm sorry, Bob Winter, 56 Elm Street. Um, how did this focus on the hotel? I mean, are, are we like going out and trying to find a hotel or a company that wants to build a hotel in the area? And if so, I don't really see the, the sense to it, frankly, because you've got a bunch of hotels in Milford and Westboro, and you've got, I mean, I would imagine EMC would be the biggest draw for a hotel in the area with of people coming through. And we don't know what's going to happen with that. I mean, that could just be uh, transferred to someplace else at any time after that sale goes through. So it just seems like it's a bunch of uh, work. But not a really good draw. I mean, if nothing's been done for like two or three years, and you're going through the, all these um, all these things to try to get a hotel in there, and, and nothing. Michael, playing, you want to try an answer to that one? Sure. Yeah. What it, what it is is you're taking a set of controls that were designed seven years ago, and you're loosening them up to see if it would enable um, a hotelier to locate something that I think most people would perceive as a really valuable thing for the town. Um, there would be hotel motel tax, there would be restaurant taxes, there would be sales taxes and things um, that could cause people to come and spend their money here. People might stay at a hotel and go to downtown and all. So it isn't creating new places to have hotels, it's just making it more possible that an entity would would find the ability to fit within these dimensional controls and build a hotel. So all it is is taking the existing dimensional controls and modifying them. It's not doing anything other than that that framework is already here. And so it's just if but somebody who's Hilton or this or that, they're gonna say, well we're never gonna build a hotel with eight thousand square feet of of function room, so we'll just never come to Hawkenden. Mm -hmm. Most people, I think, would perceive that a quality hotel out by 495 with those extra taxes and, and people coming in to maybe spend money would be a really good thing for the town to have. The district's already there. It's just that the dimensional controls make it um, a, an incredible disincentive for them to spend hundreds of thousands or plus dollars to come here. So this just makes it more possible they might choose here instead of Westboro or Milford or somewhere and have them get those massive tax benefits and the hotel motel tax that you get yeah. and the other benefits for the town. Okay, I'd, I'd flip your argument on the EMC around the other way. Maybe if there was a hotel around, maybe that would encourage EMC or if there's a successor into continuing sure. to occupy Plus, those spaces. Right. Yeah, well, or new people coming to take those that. empty spaces. Well, and this and, broken element. Okay, too. anyone <laughs> else? Let's keep move on because we got a couple other goodies coming up here. Uh, Elmwood Park uh, Business Sticker District. Yes. That might have been your last question yeah. there. So okay. why don't you ask it again? And do we want to have it introduced? Yes. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Jeez, Thank talk you. about skipping right ahead. Boy, it's moving it along. <laughs> moving, really moving it along. Okay, let's go right to the question and answers. No. So <laughs> okay. Talk about selective. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so we, we decided to take a look at this um, uh, last year when it, when it did, came before Zach and, and the planning board. There were uh, uh, a lot more questions than answers, it seems, uh, about the way that this was written. We had um, ways that there, there were an industrial, an industrial area that we're going to do an overlay on it, and if it went through a... Um, a master plan process. You're allowed to do this. If it didn't have a master plan, you're allowed to do that. And the and the paper, the, the just the paper itself was very thick. It looked like something that may have come out of joint meeting of Congress. Um, so nothing comes out of that. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll pass it and see what see what's about. <coughs> yeah, um, yeah and, and so what we wanted to do was to, yeah, and, and, and really it came down to uh, near one of the last meetings, <coughs> we decided to just scrap everything and start over again and, and just put, who do we want to create? And what don't we want there? Let's not put it there. And what um, what are we trying to what are we trying to encourage? You know, and some of the things that we were looking to try and do is is to you know it, it, this is a redevelopment. <coughs> this is not like taking Lumber Street where they t tore down a bunch of trees. It's not like Legacy area where they where they Western Nurseries where they tore down trees <coughs> to put up this. This th this is you know uh, dozens of acres of parking lot. That um, that from from this, if you look at the Google Maps and satellite view, you can see the cracks in the parking lot that it's been there so long, that that people haven't parked there or anything, and uh, so this is a, a redevelopment that we wanted to try and encourage something, you know, and, and you know a a, a university, a, a campus or or, or s s uh, some other entity of that effect. Um, that, that maybe a, a hotel would want to go there next to it, so maybe some shops. Um, so we decided to to look at it a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, outside the box, so to speak. And uh, so what we came up with was a um, Elmwood Park Business District, and um, you know, and, and have it a, a, a mixed use. I'm not going to get into reading all of these. <laughs> this is. This is uh, this is long. Um, if, if if through the chair, I'd like to yield a yield a minute to to uh, Mr. Purse because this is this is one that he'd like to talk about, I believe. Yeah, thanks. I, I think that one of the most critical plans was almost a um, uh, Don came to Marblehead thing. If if we all remember, this is the area. If I'm not wrong on the lane where they, the cross point development and all that was. And one of the critical elements of that that actually hamstrung us for quite a long time was the concept of a of a master's you know master's plan special permit type of a thing. And what our discussion recognizes that's fine if there's basically one owner, but when you have an area that you want to incentivize to, and and as as John pointed out, this is already developed land. You know if this was in a Riverfront to be called degraded, you know, it's 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 something that's semi moribund. It's environmentally tremendously unfriendly. It's it's paved. It's it it creates drainage issues. It creates heat uh, issues and and vacancy issues and all the rest. And so, but it's multiple parcels with multiple owners. And and I think that one of the reasons that a lot of people had trouble with with Finn and the other developers session is how are you going to get everybody to sign into one gigantic master plan special permit and so one of the much smarter people on the zoning committee than I said well why don't we just get rid of that and then let's see how we could address it almost just like a just a rezoning um, that would affect just like any area of the town that has a lot of people that own different pieces of land but that it that it meets the uniformity uh, concept that that it's similarly situated land that makes sense to have it all fit together. And once once we took that out of it, it, it really opened up a whole new way of looking at that property. And so as, as Elaine's um, summary points out, you know, a lot of the uses stay the same. A bunch of sort of lower grade uses get eliminated, like manufacturing and warehousing and distribution. So in other words, it's to discourage you know the more industrial style of uses which in turn causes people if they were going to develop here to to do upgraded development which would mean there would be people that could have more environmentally sensitive developments uh, better designed parking facilities uh, more lead type stuff uh, you can't do that in a warehouse, uh, but you can do it in a quality office building or things like that or some of the other recreational facilities um, that, that we talked about. So it seemed to be a way to, to make this area more attractive and people could still develop the lots individually or somebody could maybe attempt to assemble but wouldn't need the ability to put the entire thing uh, under under a massive um, master uh, site plan 
Um, and again, I think that the really critical element was that it's already heavily impacted property. Um, so it would be a way of encouraging, and again, remember all this is through you know, site plan approval and, and all the rest of that, so that, that the planning board would look at all the redevelopments for how the traffic would flow, how the, how the parking lots would be designed, how the open space would be upgraded, and all the rest of that. And again, it, it's the, the idea is to encourage people to come and invest very substantial dollars in a use pattern that has very limited impact, uh, frankly, on the schools, uh, and as a result, um, you know, allows for money and tax base to come into the town, uh, but has significant limitations on the impact for the services. Cliff, Cliff Kessner, 86 West Main Street. Um, it's a free part that I'll, I'll, I'll put out, and then maybe you can address them as, a, as, I, as I go. First of all, um, we're talking about several different owners of, of that property at, as it stands, and, and who says that those other uh, abutters to the property that is, I think, what we're focusing on was Finn Perry's property. Um, why is there is a co correspondence between those residents of or owners of that property in Finn Perry, first of all. Um, secondly, is are they all in the same mindset that their property, they want to redevelop their property, which they already own. So, so we're talking about a one set piece of property that is going to benefit one owner of that piece of land. But the adjacent people that are associated to it, they own their land, and maybe they don't want to be part of this overlay. Hey, let, uh, so that's, that's the first I question. That's, I mean, the first I, question I, I is, is very similar to one I had. Do the current landowners support this proposal? Well, but here's something before you get to that, Ken. Yeah. I, 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 unless I missed something in the meetings that we attended, I don't think that any of what we did, and I want to be corrected by Elaine or John or anybody, was designed to benefit or or somehow cater to a particular owner. Okay. That was the whole idea. Well, it was designed to to try to deal with the whole area in a manner that would encourage an, an up zoning uh, and uh, you know a, a, a more beneficial and valuable the use of the property going forward. There's nothing here. There's no particular person that owns a piece that that then encourages that poses this the question, to occur. Then that okay. poses the question to me that that who is who's bringing this forth and for what purpose? I don't I don't I see it. The, the town committee is bringing it forward, uh, right? Right. Which, which is what we do on a lot of zoning. So. Absolutely, and I understand that. But the, the initial there has to be an initial. Um, status of somebody that wants to make this this yes. not necessarily yes 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 no, yes. no. Well, we get together no. as a committee no, not sure at all no oh. I mean we, we make all sorts of changes of, yeah. of stuff just we hoping we're going to get something there okay uh, we're not successful uh, for example the hotel we, we put that in a few years ago. Nobody was really no, pushing for it. Okay, we thought hotel. a hotel was a good idea, and town meeting passed by. Okay, I, I, second open, question. I'll, I'll, second question. Well, um, real quick, would, would I just be, want to say, Cliff, yeah. one, of the, one of the things that came up was we, took, we looked at an aerial shot of the, of the area mm -hmm. of the land and saw how degraded sure. the parking lot is and Absolutely. how bad of a situation that whole area is and said, so we need to do something better than this. But did you we mention that to the owner of that property? Can I just add that the, noter the owners were notified of the public hearing this evening? Yep. Okay, okay. but, but and, and still, they have, to, they have the final say of what they do to their property, don't they? Yes, they do. Okay, so, so that right, means... Whether they keep it or sell it or whatever, right. Or whatever, you know, like, like maybe, they, maybe they want us to keep it that way, maybe they don't want to keep it that way, but wouldn't that behoove us to find out what the majority of... of, of um, consensus is for the landowners themselves at present. Wouldn't that here right huh? now? That's one of the reasons what? we're here. That's right. a public meeting. That's right. I right. Mean, now, so if they had a concern, they would come here and say, I don't want my land rezoned that way. I like it to be a broken right. down right, parking you, lot that's essentially vacant. Can I ask you who you represent at, at the board right uh, being here at the board right now? He's, a, he's on zoning yeah, advisory. Yeah, I'm on the like, zoning advisory committee. I, I know. Okay, I, know. So I, 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 I don't want to go that way with this. I mean, I, I mean but it, I'd like to just know how this this came about to this to this level. 
he he's a, a member of, 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 of the uh, he's a member of the zoning advisory committee and he's on that committee as a representative of the it's board 10, of appeals. 12, 14 people. Yeah, there's yeah, a whole there's bunch. 15. Okay. There's 15. Yeah, exactly. I don't need. Okay. A, I don't know yeah. a single person that owns a piece of this property here and couldn't care less either way. I mean, it makes it sound like you have an agenda that you are working for some of the people there. And if they had a problem, then why would okay. they be we, here to we, say, we, we don't have wait, I'm going to butter in the okay. accessible point to that, to that what you're cha making changes to. And, and I have a, a, a person sitting right next to me that is the other side of that um, entrance to that, to that venue. And so that brings me into the, to the mix just as much as it does anybody else. And that's where I question the fact that who is who is the behind the the position of making these zoning changes and for for what cause to upgrade the area and bring okay. more value and value. Then if to that the is town. the case, then if that the picture doesn't help me, it doesn't matter what the picture looks like. I'm I'm talking about the owners of the property and what are they ready to sell their property to make to make these changes or, or they don't have to sell their property they could just they could just redevelop their property consistent with these changes continue with their okay and what if they, they didn't do want them they don't they don't they they keep it doing. Doing. Okay. 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 So, so so what it's I not think, in a domain the it's, problem that I see now is that, that it okay. narrows it down to one thing is that there's the, the, there has to be someone behind something that to make this um, oh. come into play besides us as a as a as Zach as the planning board. Uh, okay, we, let me let me let me try to answer it. Time out. Time out. No, I, John. Okay, sorry. At the end of the day, the planning board in town meeting can zone whatever we want to zone, and it's a wish list. Boy, we would like to zone so we have a beautiful restaurant downtown that that serves gourmet meals for four bucks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but it isn't us at the end of the day that can accomplish it. It's whoever wants to open a restaurant. And, you know, quite frankly, if they have gourmet meals at four bucks, I'll probably eat there once a week. But oh, we'll uh, have to select and let them serve liquor. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway. Uh, anyway, so let's, uh, let's go on to other questions now. I just want to make Frank. a comment. Um, we're pretty much all on the same side. Um, we're either elected or appointed, but we're all volunteers. Um, and uh, sometimes, and you guys are at Butters, I mean, you guys are there, I appreciate your coming, Mr. Neal, and uh, sometimes we know things, or, I, mean, I don't know that gentleman there, I think I've seen him on TV, I've never met him in person before, but yeah, who are the, who are we? And we have name tags, but does that, it's all online, Where's but we're all trying to do our best to make planning for that area better from the problems we had last year. Uh, you had issues, the developer had questions, and things didn't happen. Right. So now they're taking a fresh look at it and saying, well, if there are going to be changes, here's what we would like to see. And these are things that we would, would like to see happen, we'll make this possible uh, going forward. The, the, the current owners don't have to do anything, they don't have to make any changes, but they may opt to say, well, we'll, you know, we'll sell to a developer who might. Right. Uh, All right. And that's so the re idea. Rebuttal of the, that would be this, this for me is that we we have both of us um and i speak for myself without um, tom but um the we in the last pre presentation we were um inflicted with an imposition of eminence domain taking of our property and and that was a very um, big slap in the face. Not by, not, wait a minute, I'm not saying by the board or by Zach, by, by the developer himself. Um, Finn well, Perry. He, he, only, only, he can't only, do only that. Domain can only happen by, right. by, by, the, by a, 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 a town. I, I understand that, but, but so, so, so it, it makes no sense. Well, well, then why was it brought to my attention in my home that 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 yeah. that would be the case? Yeah, okay. I, I th I, I, it's not germane to what we're Talking about tonight with this, uh, let me let me open it up for the board members now to, to get some comments. I had three. One is with this taking it out of the hotel district and makes hotels by right. That would then potentially increase the number of hotels. We right now we're we were at two, and this would allow additional hotels beyond the district, which has got two. That's right. If, if it turned out that somebody thought that 
as this developed, that in the future there may be a value because of how, let's say, the area grew, that they may think that there would be a value to put a hotel there. Then you that's could put a hotel could, or two or th maybe three. In, or in order whatever. to streamline it, when we were trying to streamline it, yep. we decided, you know, when we when we were talking about the, you know, as I said before, if it's if there's a master plan or no master plan and industrial, okay. we just try to make it straightforward. Yeah, you can have a hotel here too. Okay. And or just hotels. Yeah, hotels. Whatever will fit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the second is, I'm really concerned when you take away some of the uses. Now, some of the uses you took away, I, I, I'll admit I don't really like some them, the per se. we recommended to take away. As yes, so. to <coughs> yes we, 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 we know we don't have the final word. Well, oh, well, well, people I mean, to misunderstand that we didn't well, take anything away. We just yes, well, I mean, we we were, we're trying to streamline it to make it I have a, a business hard, park. Well, my action item for Elaine is, are any of those uses that we're taking away currently being occupied? I don't want to make somebody non-conforming at town meeting, quite frankly. Well, Could you give us a few examples? Oh, <laughs> like, um, uh, how about the automobile and truck repair, which don't they repair tanks in one of the buildings? Or didn't, you know, the, the tank guy is over there? I mean, not not that that's what we, we, can, we what can we like. Well, you know, but I mean, I just, don't, I just, and I think that's fascinating. I mean, where, where were you? Or where was the town when it did massive rezonings to take lots that were five and six and seven thousand square feet around the lakes and things, and suddenly say it would be a good idea to have them be twenty, thirty, forty thousand, which rented every single one of those properties legally not before. I know before my time, and well, <laughs> I mean, so yeah. that made no sense. So yeah. sometimes when you upgrade. And there are really very solid protections for people that become non-conforming. Yep. And they can continue using it, and they can change to degree. They can upgrade their facilities. They can upgrade the quality of things as long as they don't, you know, breach the certain tests. Yep. Um, well, so I'm, I'm, I'm just you. saying that, that that is a a point of discussion. I'm not mm -hmm. so saying that, quite well, frankly, I would like your district better than... than well, we're looking at, 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 at the revenue. We... You know, you know the garage, you know, the garage shop businesses versus putting up and a, uh, a hotel. Or and a I want to make sure that that everyone thinks that Perkin Elmer and all their new facilities fits into the new new thing. The the one with the manufacturing. I, I see how you kind of written it, but I, I want somebody to make sure that at least Perkin Elmer. I mean that I I. I view them as a very positive oh, guys absolutely. that we really, you know, if, if it all looked like Perk and Elmer, we'd be really happy probably. Right. So uh, anyway, those are my comments. Other questions from the members of the board? Claire? Yeah, I, I will just echo Ken's concern. Some of these things that are restricted, I, I certainly don't want to see big, heavy, dirty, ugly, noisy, smelly operations. But, you know, we I think part of our objective here is to find ways to bring businesses into town if they are a good fit for the neighborhood. And, um, you know, there are certainly types of maybe what would be called light manufacturing that are contained, that aren't noisy. Um, I, I, I hate to limit the use in some areas, but I, ju I wanted, so th that is a concern, some of these that are, that are limiting that we might not want to want to limit. Um, what was the thinking behind having a building cover 100% of the lot area? And it also says that there's going to be a minimum pervious area requirement. Well, pervious is the one? opposite of impervious, which means you've got to have something that's drainable. So wouldn't that be, wouldn't those be contradictory? If you had 100% lot area covered, you couldn't have any pervious area. Where are you finding the 100%? Uh, well, on our cheat sheet over on page 5, Elaine explains the industrial view district, and it says the amount of building space that could be on a lot will change from 50% of a lot area to 100% of the lot area. Right. So this, F you're calculating floor area, not the yeah, coverage. It's not lot uh, coverage. It's oh, floor okay, area. okay. So, so you can't calculate the floor area. It's actually it's right. encourage it, more green space. Yeah, oh, we're okay. trying to encourage okay. more green space. The actual lot coverage is maximum of 60%. Oh, all right, all right. I and we're, it, and yeah, we're we trying to encourage, and see, we don't want those yeah, giant parking talking. lots mm -hmm. that I was just okay. showing the pictures of. Okay. We're trying to green it up as much as possible. And, right. that, and that, was, that was our... Right. I was reading that. And, and for the light manufacturing is, you know, we've been, we've been industrial 
that place has been industrial its entire life, mm -hmm. and no new industrial have come. Well, mm -hmm. Hopkinson has always so been a small it's town. Cliff, 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 somehow we just finished. Yeah. We just finished with that. And so we were trying to see if if we modified it to some extent that if somebody else might try and okay. come because there are buildings they could they could still move into if they wanted okay. to. Uh -huh. Other board members? I, I don't want to repeat the same question, but um, I guess I'm not clear on the rationale for limiting <coughs> specifically or excluding distribution and manufacturing. Other than it's not, it's, happening, it's not happening, but but why exclude it? You know, hotels aren't happening either. Well, they are up and down 495. Yeah, it's not hopping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We know they why. Yeah. They're 100% yeah. full in, in, in Milford. Oh, sorry, through the chair. Yeah. They're 100% full in Milford and, and, and in Westboro. Okay. Anyway, uh, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, to Frank's point about distribution, I mean, when you're at the crossroads, this might be something, but do we really want, you know, does distribution really work on that particular site? From a traffic I'm, in and out. I'm not trying to judge business by yeah. business, industry by industry. Gotcha. I'm just saying something was permitted. Now we're saying it's not permitted, and and I, I'm not clear on why. I, 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 true. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm having that hard time. Well, well, I mean, just the last thing yeah. before I go. I mean, I, I guess we talked about this at at <laughs> the committee. I mean, as I said, and it sounds overly simplistic, but you know, zoning is used generically for two purposes. It's to ensure that noxious things don't happen next to things that people don't think noxious. Mm -hmm. So you have residential zones and they exclude commercial uses and, and things like that. And you allow some quasi-commercial by special permit, let's say for home offices and things like that. And then mm -hmm. another whole element of zoning that Elaine would understand better than I even is because she's a planner is that you try to look at a distribution of uses as a way of incenting certain things to happen. And if you consider that the development of a municipality is an evolutionary thing, which unfortunately, this is my own personal perception, is not adopted all so much in a lot of places. But if you do look at it that way and you evaluate how land use patterns change and needs of residents change and economic needs for the municipality to continue to function change, then, then you take a big picture view and that you sometimes make modifications to encourage things to occur and as a result sometimes you discourage other things to occur. And yes, is it a group of choices? Of course it is. But the alternative obviously could be, well you leave everything the way it's always been and you just let everybody do whatever they want. Uh, but that may not produce the best mix for the community. It may not produce the best tax base. It may create drains on services that can't be met. And so part of planning and rezoning is to make conscious choices that a certain use of mixes is perceived as more valuable because things don't stay the way they were in the 30s or the 50s or the 90s. And and sometimes you even try to plan for what is it going to be like in 10 or 20 years. So I think that's the big change. Part of it for this district was trying to create a package of uses that offered some amenities and some reason to be there so that, for instance, a high-end hotel wouldn't necessarily want to go next to a manufacturing facility or a warehouse. It would want to go with uh, some R&D, uh, some office, uh, some educational uses, those kinds of things. So trying to craft kind of something that all worked together as a package. Yeah. Well, I, I, I see the hotel and the expanded retail uses is probably highest on the list. Of no, actually, we were, look, trying, we were actually, um, a lot, there was a lot of talk, about, as I said before, about uh, trying to get a, a university to put a satellite campus. Something. So, granted, they don't pay, they don't pay taxes, yet um, everybody, they, they bring people. Okay. And they bring okay. hotels and lodges and restaurants. Yes, go ahead. I just um, wanted to voice one concern about the genetic, biological, and chemical research centers, level one that we looked through. That would have some concern about the safety. They're already there. That's already allowed. It's, it's a okay. sense now. That's not a change. Yeah. That's not and, a change. And if you look at mm -hmm. level three, it's, I think level two is your high school lab. Yeah. Level three might be Milford Hospital. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
Okay. Level. I mean, it's... Can, can, can I just make one yeah. observation? I, I, and I kind of goes along with the eliminating a bunch of stuff. Um, you know, there's a whole block of business buildings down there, the panels that incorporate the metal mirrors guy, and there's a snowplow guy, and there's a tire guy, all those little nickel dime operations that employ local people. Now, if if, what we, if we do this, they can still operate. I understand mm -hmm. it. There'll be pre existing non conformity, they can still operate. But what will happen is the property will become more valuable, it will become what we want a more, more gentrified use. Right? Mm -hmm. Where are these guys going to go? Yep. I, I, I think maybe, Elaine, we got to reach out to the property owners and make sure that I, I don't want to stand up at town meeting and have five of them all come up right after another and, and it'll kill it. But, but then again, maybe they're in, in support of it. I don't know. I just don't know. Yes, sir. Can I just make one yep. comment? It's yep. something that hasn't been addressed yet. Sure, go ahead. And that is with um, with all the designs here for development and everything, there's nothing's been talked about transportation in and out of here. I mean, there's like a two lane, there's, there's Lumber Street extension, and uh, Elm Street, that one portion that by Elmer Perkins that goes back behind the gas station, and that's it. And if you start doing all this development here, it's just, I mean, you've already got enough development across the street. And it's going to downgrade that intersection to uh, a fair intersection as opposed to a good intersection. And then you do all this, and it's just going to jam everything up. And there's no there's no allowance here for an outlet. And I'm just wondering if that can be put into consideration somewhere, preferably a connection with Wood Street. I concur with him as well. Well, one of the, one of the uh, you know zoning doesn't. Site plan review would require that anything going in there doesn't break the bank as far as being able to get in and out. I mean, that's, that's the, the part. I don't think it's, number one, I, having walked to Wood Street, I honestly don't think Conservation Commission will ever approve getting through there. I mean, I mean something has to be done. Though, it's just too wet. If, if you develop that area, it's just going to increase the pressure dramatically. Uh, and, I understand. And with, with forward thinking and looking, that's where we come in as, as the abutters. That's what I'm concerned about. John? Uh, I just have a question. What's the difference between a hotel room with a hotel with meeting rooms and a conference center with hotel rooms, with sleeping rooms? Because it's conference centers would add a door, dormitory component, which would be hotel-like rooms, but in the between H and I. But in H, you can have a hotel with meeting rooms. I remember, I remember talking like, about it. I forget what the answer was. And if, if it's a dormitory room, I mean, they're just, any conference center I can think of in the area is basically just more conference space, which seems to be allowed by H, but wouldn't be allowed by I. Were we trying to distinguish between, like, a, a university conference center and I think there were some who were concerned about the traffic impacts of people staying at a conference center but to your point what's the difference between that and right. the hotel right. well it would be well then, then they the would hotel have to, was a small the, size yeah then they would have to have the the restaurant the which it would but and typically center. a conference center would actually have less traffic because people are going to stay there overnight and stay in the facility versus staying in the hotel driving someplace else and coming back. So from a traffic impact, if you look at like the Babson Conference Center, which is in a quasi-residential area, it's much less traffic impact than if it was a hotel. I just don't want... It no, seems that's fine. Right. This is why we continue to vet it. Yep. You know? yep. Yep. Sir? Uh, I've just... I didn't hear anything about my question, and I'm just um, wondering if that could be considered by some ideas tossed about... I mean, connecting off to oh, well, the, the as traffic. far as like outlets, yeah. It's, I mean, it's a major, it's a major it's concern. And I think especially it's a real, the university or something it's a real in like you're that. like you're imposing. Yeah. It, it, it's it's that's a, a site plan review. Does it work or not? I mean, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I mean, you know. <coughs> and then and then you also have to consider, if I make it to the chair, you have to also c consider that if somebody's going to invest. But shouldn't uh, that be considered? Cliff, let me finish talking. 
Yeah. If, if, if somebody's going to invest a, st a couple hundred million dollars to build a hotel, mm -hmm. I'm sure they're going to make sure that people can get in and out or that, that, that somebody's going to lose a lot of money. Uh, okay. I just think it's something that should be you mean you, you mean like you mean you mean like Starbucks? Okay. okay. If I can uh, make a comment. Um, my views are similar to Ken's, but a little bit different in a couple aspects. I haven't been on a conservation commission. Um, I think that building a road back there to Wood Street is doable, and I think it would be a major need for any kind of major project coming in. We don't want to have Elm Street and, and the Elm Street extension Lumber overloaded. Street extension. Lumber Street extension overloaded. Um, that said, any project that comes in, as Ken says, they're going to have to have the traffic study done, and the traffic study is going to point out there's issues with this, and then they'd have to look at building a road, and which is what happened last year. So right. So we're looking forward as as trying to redevelop this Certainly and right. make it viable, Certainly but right. we also have to look forward to, to, to the traffic aspect first. But there's, your point is, is nothing specifically saying you probably have to build a road. Right. And um, that's a good point. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, let's move. Elaine, what are our options from a schedule? We're, we're about halfway done. Well, actually, the next three, well, actually, the next three go together. Yeah, the next three go together. And okay. you know what I mean? And you let's, can introduce let's, them. Uh, let's kind of push forward on this to try to get this done. We've got great attendance tonight. And, you know, I, some of the other folks that are on the schedule are going to have to kind of wait a little bit. But we'll try to get to them a little bit. And uh, Yeah, why don't just, why don't, can you introduce the other three? Sorry, I'm which, 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 here. Which, which <laughs> other three do we want? The, 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 the next three are the Garden, Village, and... and uh, well, you forgot the sign. sign. Oh, no, oh, shoot, sign. Okay, all right, I'll come back. Okay, let's... Yeah, let's the board can continue with the language. Yeah. Sign bylaw modifications. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Joe, we'll get to you in a little, about another half an hour. Sorry. Okay. The um, sign by law came up because there was a um, never whole section sign by law. There was a uh, there's the Cliff Notes version Supreme Court ruling that basically said uh, that we can no longer control content of uh, of signs, and that uh, one sign is the same as another. Oh, here it is. My whole section signed by law, and um, so uh, a, a Ray, Ray sent us down a um, uh, what we what we really can and can't do in the signed by law that we passed just last year, and uh, he 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 gutted it. <laughs> Basically, uh, uh, it's a. Uh, it, it, it just held us really tight, so we really didn't have much leeway in this. Coming from uh, this, this basically, he took our last year's signed by law and uh, added some legalese to it, and that's what we ended up with. Okay. Uh, any members of the public want to talk about signs tonight? That won't happen on the town meeting floor. <laughs> um, it's real crowd. boring. It would happen to it. It's, well, it's you know what I mean. What, you know, it's it's what it's what the Supreme Court allows us to do. That's really all there, we can do. Is there maybe a couple of examples? Of that we can well, there, there are a couple. I mean, basically, what the Supreme Court says: you can't do things on content. So you can't say before we had like a realtor sign that we limited it to a certain number of realtor signs or home business signs. And, you know, now if you, it's just the number of signs. And, and you know, quite frankly, I understand uh, the, uh, what is it, the First Amendment, I believe. First Amendment. And uh, I can understand that, but I see practically it just, it really kind of, and, and we've done a few things in here that, probably hurt but we suspend the number of signs so that during political season that you know some of us can put up every one of our candidates number of signs that we want to put up but uh, it, it just it just doesn't feel great but it's going to be one of these that will probably just sell on town meeting floor with kind of grit your teeth and hold hold it and 
and, yeah. and go ahead with it because that's what you're stuck with a lot of it. Because there is there is a couple discretional ones, and one was to limit the number of square feet of a sign on a building from right now the formula is one and a half feet per linear foot of a building and it goes down to one. I, I, what, I don't understand. I mean, other than the fact that people want smaller signs, I guess, is the... I, when we did it originally for the one and a half feet, we were envisioning a 20-foot building section in the middle of downtown, and that puts a sign like that. Maybe the signs get brought in a little bit more, but usually on the, I'll say, the row house downtown, like, like was next to it, the signs are kind of mm -hmm. the same height. You know, at mm -hmm. one foot they wouldn't work, but at 18 inches they would work. I mean that's kind of the rationale. I have a uh, maybe a hard time on that one. Just yeah, and then this one, this one, you guys can feel free to 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 cut this one wherever you can. <clears throat> I think that that really just came up because there really was there was so so little that we the leeway that we were allowed to have them put on this was so small that wherever we could we sort of did. Yeah, there's a few. And I got one specific question. I yep. Listening to you speak. This doesn't just apply to its permanent signs. This applies to temporary signs. Are there sections in there? There's temporary, temporary signs, signs and sandwich okay. signs and banners, Thank you. and banners and the whole bit. And it's uh, it's it's an, it's signs are signs were hard to to pass a few years ago. They'll be hard to pass at time of court. Let's let's bring the next three up at once, which is garden apartments, village housing, and senior bylaws which is something the planning board asked to have. So we were kind of the... Yes, could push. you introduce those, please? Yes, I can do that in very quick. Basically, if you look at Hopkinton before about seven, eight years ago when we had the master plan, we had no apartment complexes. Now we have 10% uh, of our housing being built in apartment complexes. We had very few garden apartments, which is condos, the, the bylaw term for condos. Now 20% of our population is going to be living in, or our number of units is going to be condos. And basically, the other thing is we have gotten above uh, our 10% requirement for uh, Mass General Law 40B, uh, which is the Affordable Housing Act. And so the garden apartment bylaw was passed in the past to have a 40B light. Now that we don't have requirement of 40B, we're recommending that we put it on hold until, uh, unless we got below our 10%. Village housing, uh, uh, basically, uh, is very similar to that. That is 100% affordable units, I believe, in village housing. And that still could be built. And then senior housing, uh, federal government has basically said that uh, we can't enforce age-restricted housing. It's, you can't discriminate against us old people or young people. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the town can't discriminate against it. So therefore, people that are building senior housing come before the planning board and say, hey, this is a great project. Go ahead and prove us because we're not going to put any kids in your school. And then a couple of years ago, go down the road and they say, oh, oh, by the way, I can't sell it to the old people. There are any old people who want to buy this house, but I got this new family that wants to put four kids in the Hopkinton school, uh, and they just bought it. So that's starting to happen. So we're recommending, and, and Zach recommended we just uh, delete the senior housing. So that's the introduction. And probably any comments on that one? I think that one will go through fairly quick in, in, in town meeting, because I, I think people are... Don't, not, don't try and add the word residential, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Frank? You oh, I'm just confused oh. because um, I, so we're, we're changing it, taking it out. Uh, anything with age restricted. And I was thinking of the conversation we had last year at town meeting about it. And, uh, the... Legacy Farms is a little bit different in that there's a host community agreement that might be enforced. Might not if you took it to the same courts that, that said, you know, you can't mess around with age districts. Condos can. Yeah, but the Condo Association 
can change their bylaws and let it go. Could. And, you know, we we tried to write the best thing we could for Legacy Farms, mm -hmm. age-restricted, but yeah, I think at the end of the day, you know, it's it's better than, I'll say, somebody coming under our senior bylaw or housing <coughs> bylaw where, you know, they're changing it, you know, and, and it's happening already. I'm, we've lost... Well, no, those are affordable units, but but we've, se we, we've the senior place on Lumber Street. I've heard stories yeah, know, of two or three units if if that was long gone. Time ago. And, uh, okay, other questions. So that takes care of a bunch of them, and we might want to combine those into one bylaw change, one article, one article yeah, because quite be frankly. Uh, We've got too many. No, we actually been pretty good this year. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. About the same. About the same. Site, site plan, bylaw modifications. Um, and open space get it together. Yeah. This is the adding the 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 couple words in talking about the historic structures. I believe. Do you want to speak to that? It was the sure. historic commission that asked about that. It's simply we have an existing bylaw, lots with historic structures that allows the planning board to make waivers to pres if it'll allow a historic home to be preserved on a site that's being developed, and that that provision is kind of buried in the back under supplemental regulations. So what we just wanted was under each type of site plan review that be called out up front when people, developers are looking at a site so they're aware of it, um, number one. And number two, that a planning board reviewing it is also aware of it. And if there's a property of significance, they know to ask if this has been considered if it's feasible, just put a little more pressure on uh, the developer, particularly up front in the planning process, to utilize that bylaw if at all possible. So it doesn't add any new requirements, it just puts it up front to call it to the attention of both the board and the developer. Okay. Any other questions on that one? Okay, Elaine, should, should we be closing the public hearing at this point, and then we'll discuss wording in another hearing. Unless you feel that uh, we may need more input, leave it open. What do people think? Should we leave it open so we can have comments? Didn't you want to <coughs> keep we do it open for the Elmwood Park? Yeah. Okay. So let's. What's our What's our next meeting? March 14th. And what time would we have to talk about that? 9.30. 9.30? Well, you have um, the Haynes Farm subdivision from 7.30 to 8.30. And then Pulte has asked for a significant block of time. 8.30 to 9.45. 8.30 yeah. to 9.45. So we could do 9.30? You could. Okay. Look for a continuance of this public hearing until... Was it the 14th, you 14th. said? March 14th. Yeah. At uh, 9.30. So moved. Second. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. I'm glad I didn't have to make any motions or anything here. This was great. Okay. Mr. Okay. Chairman, thank you very much yes, for your thank time. You. Thank you for the public for, for coming. And uh, we got other stuff to go, so. Zach for doing it all. Good work. Thank you. Yes, you guys did a lot of work. That didn't get in the minutes, thank I you. see. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, yeah, the chairman gushing over all the work that Zach did. Fifteen members this year we had. Good. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Joe. 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 Where you going? You go home. You out for a while. You out for a while. I don't have to come. I don't think I have another you need meeting. Need a ride? No, I don't need a ride. I'm talking with. Oh. Yeah, just give, just give me a call. I'll, I'll try and stay local. If this, if the, if there's anything that stays open, just like downtown. Joe, we'll come on here. down. Right. I'll stay with you. You can stay. With you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Can I stay with you? Sure, absolutely. Just public meetings. More than. Um, okay, this is uh, 8183 Main Street. Right. A gazillion years ago. Eight. Well, Eight years ago, uh, we approved a uh, new building on that. And for the members of this board, Joe, maybe you can introduce the building just really quick, and then we'll see about extending your uh, site plan approval. 
Um, I'll do it this way. This is next to the old high school, be kind of by the at the field there. Okay. This is by in between uh, 85 Main, which is the old high school, and 77 Main, which is the um, brick building that uh, uh, the jewelry store is in. Um, and there is a house on the front. This is the front mm -hmm. of the street right here. Okay. The street. There is a house there, 81 Main Street, which is which is used as an office space at the present time, half leased. And uh, the proposal is to put in building at the back of the lot um, and have the parking in between. And the approval was given on April 11th of 2008. Uh, Claire and I were yeah. only members, I think, I the think back. so at the time. Yeah. Um, the site plan approval has been extended three times in that period of time and now is coming up for the uh, uh, fourth request for extension. And the primary reason for the request for extensions have always been that there's been no economic incentive to build the property because of the lack of um, enthusiasm for the downtown of Hopkinton. There's always been adequate empty office space that would dictate that this not be built. Um, this last um, this last year has been the first time in eight years that there's been any kind of increase in any th development downtown, and um, it's still a struggle, and it still may not be constructed because there's so much of a magnetism towards 495 and a magnetism towards uh, the lands that are being available at Western Nurseries that the downtown is basically being sucked dry of any retail or office use, plus the conversion of uh, offices to um, electronic. Um, I mean, most people with a computer can go to Starbucks, as somebody said, and set up their office and be there and pay nobody any rent. Um, but having said that, I'm going to go one more round of economic development uh, discussions with the contractors. Rates have gone down as far as uh, borrowing is concerned that might make it work. Um, but it is the only place that you can place a commercial building in Hopkinton downtown without tear in, and you can't tear down the primary building because there's no parking allowed in front of buildings in downtown, whereas in rural business you can park in front of a building. Um, so that kind of makes it a difficult development scheme, and we came up with this as the last alternative, so to speak, years ago. Um, and just as a little wrinkle, speaking of, uh, so uh, signs, I'm going to make a comment about signs after I finish this uh, downtown. But um, the proposal is to have a two-story or three-story, depending on what we can do economically now because we may be able to add a third story with keeping the height the same. Uh, with an elevator, at handicap access, all the parking is within the regulations. Everything has, nothing's changed in eight years as far as its conformity. So, um, and we've tried to keep some green space as required by the bylaws. So I'm looking for another two-year extension on the approval granted in April of 2008. Any questions from anyone here? Procedurally, uh, if it's a one-year extension, for instance, would it, he doesn't get anything done in one year, he had to come back in a year and get another extension? Mm -hmm. And then uh, if it's a two-year extension, if that is that it, or does he would still be able to extend it after that? He still come back again. There's no yeah. limit on There's the no difference extension. There's no difference between should ask that better. So. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I prefer the two because of the timing that it's going to take to get the financing and the, mm -hmm. and the marketing and, and get the property lined up because it may take um, um, some months to get uh, that kind of thing going. Not that I have any objection to it. I just, since the board makeup and eight years is a long time, I'm uncomfortable continuing and saying, hold over, hold over, hold over, hold over. I'd rather look at it afresh um, when you're ready to do it. I invested close to $25,000 in the original site plan approval. Right. And, but that and was then eight, I would have to do it again. That was uh, eight years ago, and I understand it. But it, it's I'm on the board now, and I think what's going to happen is eight of the nine members on the board after the next turn will be different. And I just think 
it, it's kind of hard when there's new construction and it might be nine and a half years since approval and somebody makes a comment on it and we notice something and I think we've got an obligation. I personally I feel I have an obligation to take a look at something that was approved eight years ago. A lot has happened in town over the time. And not saying any objections to it, I just think it's it's part of I personally feel part of my responsibility. Well then I will speak having sat on that board that I do know we spent a long time with Mr. Sazula on this with discussions about how to fire issues with the building next door and where the parking would fit. Um, I think Design View probably looked at it. He came up with a design that was complementary to the downtown. We were pleased with the fact that the front building, which has historic value, he was keeping and maintaining and doing a design that complemented uh, the existing building. Um, and. It, you know, while I understand concerns of more current board members, I can't feel that all the factors that were that were reviewed uh, extensively by the board at that time and found satisfactory have really changed at all. Um, and I do know that time is money, and I do know the amount of time with engineers and architects and meetings that were put in by both the board and Mr. Strazula so that I personally don't feel that anything has really changed nor is there anything that would warrant putting him through this same exercise um, a second time at a cost when knowing how this board operates I don't think the circumstances are any different than what would have been approved today yeah, I, oh, go ahead. One of my concerns, what triggered it was you were saying, well, it might now be three stories, which is a change. Oh, well, that would come back before the yeah. board. Yeah, that would definitely have to, but I have to do an analysis on its construction costs um, and its square footage in, in parking, and also the parking that was available. If I remember right, your parking was getting close, wasn't it? Well, it was, but it, it, um, it conforms. Either way, we're we're working on a couple of ideas to make it um, okay. to make it work. The, the dilemma is that the market has changed. Mm -hmm. What what um, you know, uh, even retail was part of the original thought, and retail just doesn't exist in downtown Hockington. Um, there's nobody who wants to come to the downtown area, so it may have to adjust to a different format. Medical use has been. We're all getting older, and more and more of that has happening. So that may be a different marketplace. That's why I need the time to remarket the building. With an approval that's only good now for a couple of more months, it, it wouldn't fly with anybody trying to market it. Um, I'll be happy to make available, you know, the sets of plans if you wanted to peruse them in, in, you know, so that you can get more familiar with it. That's not an issue, but I would like to get an extension. Um, and it does, I'll say, and Elaine will probably back me up, that nothing in zoning has changed in the eight years that would make this non-conforming or hard to approve mm -hmm. for reapproval. Because the, uh, the, I'm going to echo Claire's comments, but also add that in this time, probably the first two times he got approved, just about the time the economy mm -hmm. tank. And yeah, yeah, 08, it was just, uh, yeah. And so, you know, there, there's a lot of those years where, you know, years where nobody did anything, so. Uh, anyway. I am the abutter, by the way, just so you know, <laughs> at 85. Yep. Okay. Yep. So. I'd like to make a motion that we consider uh, approving a one-year extension. And I'm making this motion because I think that I'd rather see something happen sooner than later. And if it doesn't happen, um, we can look at it again next next year. Um, but uh, ten years would be the if we do it for ten two years more, it would be ten years, and that's two terms of anyone on the on the board. And then in two years' time, Ken will be the last member from that uh, era, from that century. So <laughs> no, so I know, I know we talk decades, not centuries. I know you put a lot of work into downtown, and I know you put a lot of. Uh, volunteering into the town. Uh, I just, um, I'd like to see something happen sooner rather than later, and if 
Is you can leverage that with the bank, saying, "Only you know, this is uh, we got a year extension. We'd like to make this happen. You give them some incentive to act quicker." Is there uh, a second for his motion? I'll second the motion. Okay. Further discussion on the motion. This is a one-year extension. So, so can I ask, if we were to vote down the one-year extension, could we then vote for a two-year extension? Yes. Or you could, or you could offer an amendment to that motion for t making it two-year. And we'll vote on the amendment first. Well, I would like to offer an amendment that it be a two-year extension because I don't think that Mr. Sazula's, I don't even want to use the word failure to build the building, um, uh, not building the building is, is, a, manner, is a matter of uh, negligence or uh, lack of due diligence that he needs to be prodded. It's a matter of the current business environment, which we all understand, and we are trying to encourage uh, commerce in our town and not not punish people who you know are are victims of the economic circumstances right now right to clear this point it's not a matter of if they if we build it they will come because they're not coming so if they come then we build it okay is there is there a second for claire's uh, amendment second okay so now we're discussing the amendment so to that point, um, two versus one year, I think, is the argument. Yeah, yeah. I, I would, I'm, I'm saying one year, not as a punishment, just as um, if it goes two years, how many? You know, we're not all going to be on the board in, in two more years. Some people's terms are ending, and some people are staying on the board. And um, who knows? Uh, I think that if we keep it one year, it. It's something he can go to the bank with and say, I've been extended for one year, and I'd like to make this happen within a year. Uh, yeah. If it doesn't happen, we're here to consider it next year. Um, I, I'd rather see something happen sooner than later, and then, and, and not to criticize Mr. S the situation anyway, but there was a change downtown at Hitchings Hardware that got changed into a, a, a laundromat, a uh, dry cleaner. So, Businesses do come in and they do succeed downtown, and um, businesses in your other buildings are succeeding. So it, no. it, I, I, it's, it's a matter of you, you're playing on a bigger scale than um, some of the other players in, in, in the mix, and I appreciate that, but I'd like to see something happen sooner. That's why I said one year, not to be, not to be punitive or anything, just to... Let me let me make the argument against or for the two year. It, it takes a while to get it. It's a marketing, it's a bank extension, it's setting up contractors. It's I I think we, you know, limited. I, I mean, and the argument that the board is going to be different and therefore things are different. I think the board sets up things that last for a long time and. You know, the approval that people that made, you know, before I was on the board, yeah, we're living with those and we're enforcing them and it's part of the, the, the deal. So I don't have a, a problem with you guys eventually taking over from me and, and, and maybe doing it better. Well, I hope better. But uh, so I don't know. I think the two years is, is, is the request before us and, and I support the two year. But I agree. I think uh, two years is appropriate. Further discussion? Seeing none, I think we're ready to vote on the amendment. All those in favor of changing the main motion to two years versus one, say aye. 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 So that's one, two, three, four. All those opposed? Two. And I think that guts, there's no abstentions. So, okay, now we're voting on the main motion, which is a two-year extension. All those in favor? All right, further discussion? I don't think we need it. Okay. Uh, vote on the main motion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone oppose? No. No? I'm, I'm, I'm abstaining. Okay, Sorry. and we got an abstention. So motion carries. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, uh, Joe. The only I wanted to make one comment because I happen to be noticing the bylaw change on the signage. Yeah. And I and one of the 
and I had a discussion with the building and zoning officer a couple of weeks ago about signage. Um, part of the problem with downtown is that these buildings do not conform like other parts of the community where they build them from scratch. So for instance, with this building, for instance, and with the old high school building, they're set back from the street considerably from what you would choose to do today where you don't have a parking lot in front of the building. And um, therefore, signage on them is further away from anybody. So by going from 1.5 to 1, uh, we did some numbers on it, and I have 16,000 square feet in that old high school building and 12 tenants. Um, I can't get signage on the building that will conform it to anything you could read from the street at one foot per square for the frontage because I have a hundred um, I have a hundred square hundred linear feet of frontage of the building and so that's a hundred and fifty square feet of signage divided by let's round it off to ten so that's fifteen square feet per per tenant even though I don't want to plaster signs on the front of that building because it would destroy its aesthetics it's the only way I can advertise people that are in the building, and I'm not getting tenants because of lack of signage. Um, the other one, the, um, the change also that you're not going to allow directory or other signs, because I've resisted putting signs in the parking lot and other places to tell people who's in the building because of the aesthetics, but quite frankly, the economics of today's time is going to require me to start doing that because I can't get tenants to come in who don't have signage because they can get it at other places in town where they can have a sign. I just talk somebody into it and give them a, a significant rent decrease to get them to come from Lumber Street to downtown for a real estate office because there's no signage. Um, so this is an issue that I think that is going to be a uh, detrimental, these changes for the downtown district. I don't know about the other parts, but um, so I'll I'll make my comments to you. You know, I'll send you an email or a letter. Uh, that would uh, be great. I'm talking about that, but thank you for your Just time. Just a clarification, so you, you have a suggestion. Uh, you're talking about both buildings or all the buildings where, because I thought I saw like a directory of the, the newer building, uh, but there is a there's a directory, but it fits into the 34 square feet of a freestanding. That's, that's a freestanding sign. The right. bigger the building, the more in, impotent the sign is. The smaller the building, the more it can have some space for everybody. Because 81 Main, for instance, only has four tenants. So you take that 34 square feet divided by four, and you've got something you can see. You've got a building that's 16,000 square feet, and you put it into 34 square feet of signage, and you can't see it. Okay. Um, so these are all things that are, are the, what do I call it, the downtown is bleeding from a thousand cuts. It's all kinds of small things that when you add them up, don't make it competitive to other parts of town. Do you have a suggestion that would? I, I will. I'll, I'll, please, we'll, please send them in. I'll chit-chat with our with uh, our building department because we're working on some ideas that we may be able to okay. put forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think Strauss Hello? Okay. I'll see you. I'll see you. Come on. Come on. You're in. We're only running a little bit late. Sorry. Okay, this has to do with a re a to informal discussion to talk about uh, making a private road a public road and then also whether or not a retention pond might be able to be removed. Right. The, the, the town asked me to, to fix two manholes on the project, number one and number two. And I said I would, and hopefully they were holding a bond on me from when they put the holding pond in 21 years ago, mm -hmm. <laughs> 22 years ago, and they're still holding the money. And I wanted that could re be released so I can at least pay for the repairs of the, of the two manholes. Now, when I purchased this land 21 years ago, I had plans of having six buildable lots, and I got five building lots. The sixth one they refused because they said, you need a holding pond. Now, it's been 22 years, 
and has a bit of drop of water that's settled in that area. And that's a 1.6 acre area. And I was wondering if they could release one acre of it so I can have a one acre building lot and leave the other 0.6 for the holding pond if it's, ne if it's necessary. You don't really need it. 22 years didn't, doesn't prove the point. I don't know what does. Excuse my voice. Yeah. Let's, um, let's bring these up like one at a time. Let's, let's talk about the detention okay. pond. Elaine, if, if we were to consider that, we would want another engineering study and you'd be also meeting current wetlands stud er, stormwater water. studies or requirements. Another one? The the stormwater has changed in 22 well, days. Actually, the subdivisions are grandfathered under the regulations under which they were approved. So the new stormwater regulations probably wouldn't apply. Okay. But the calculations that were done that determined that this drainage system needed a detention pond would have to be... I mean, there was obviously there was some science that resulted in this, and somebody would have to review that again. <coughs> it was it was a firm and... In Hudson, I believe it was. Don't so, know. so you you know, the applicant would have to hire an engineer to review the the drainage for the subdivision and explain why the tension pond are, is no longer needed. And then there's pipes going there. So you, where's the water going to go that's coming down the road? So, you have to take a whole new look at the there's no, subdivision. There's no water in it. And then we well, might I don't know where it, goes. <laughs> it never collected any water in 22 years. Hmm. I checked it every week. Dry as it can be. Hmm. So, you know, so somebody could take a look at that and say, if you know, maybe the water's going the across the street. Um, um, or maybe it's not built properly. Yeah. All right, so, so before we consider the detention pond, as we we want another engineering study of of it. Okay. To, you know, and if the engineers say that it can work. And then, you know, there'll be our peer review with our engineer, okay. checking that engineer. Uh, you know, I, I, maybe I'm talking f for all of us, but, you know, if, if, the, if the engineering works, then we don't care, do we? No. I mean, okay. I mean that, that aspect of it. Uh, uh, let me let me address the next one, which was the making it a, acceptance as a public way. Uh, in order to make it a public way, it would have to be at public way standards at the time. Now, or at, you know, before us to accept it, we, yeah, we I won't say we want it new and pristine, but we want it up to standards. Okay, well, that's, well, that's what the town told me. To get it up to standards, you have to fix uh, one and two. The, the two manholes. Yeah. And, and and but I don't know whether or not when the board approved it twenty something years ago. Whether because it was a private way, we we let it go with a smaller paving, or I, I you know, no, I, I, you know, I, the, I same engine, the, the same engine, the same engine. I'm aware of, of an appeal since I'm an iron work. I have, I know nothing about that. Yeah. So the same engineer that talks to you about the detention pond can probably advise you as to whether he's, or not I the don't road. Think he's in troop. Is he still around? Oh yeah, Jim mm -hmm. Troops. Yeah. yeah, Troops. He's the one that. Uh, he's a surveyor. Surveyor. Well, there's two surveys well, in town. And there needs to be a street acceptance plan, and the board would need to reverse its 1992 decision. But, to come but out. we wouldn't do any of that without an engineering review that says that's what it's out there is done. It, there might even be a, some sampling to make sure the pavements, you know, of the correct thickness. I, you know, I, you know, we go. With these, we, we, with these private streets, we get ourselves into trouble almost every time. There's, there's days that I, I almost think we should, should never do it because it should never have been a private street. Because we get into this, tr this, this thing after 20 years. I yeah, mean, it, there's, it, a, there's a big strip of grass on both sides of the road, and I cut that grass for so many times. 
sick and tired of it. I'm getting, I might get any younger. Nah, none of us are. Uh, I mean, I'm good for another 10, 15 years, a little more. Yeah. I hope you're good for much more than that. Uh, let's see. Now, the last one was the bond removal. Why would we still have this bond? Uh, the uh, bond was retained to guarantee the street trees. And at the couple of times this was brought up in uh, years past, uh, the board just never authorized yeah. its release. Yeah, so it's because they put the, the wiring underground in that area, so it was... Yeah, yeah. It was so tree-wise we're okay, or at this point, we do we care? I don't think anyone cares. So shouldn't we hold on to it in case there are, and we do take over the street that we need to make repairs and use it for repairs? Is not the idea? Yeah. Well, I, th I think it... I think at least our, my procedure for the vote is before I would accept it and recommend it to town meeting to approve it, it's got to be up to speak. You know, that's a non-starter. So if it, it, isn't, it ain't fixed, it stays the way it is. You know, and, and, and we, 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 we delegate that to our engineer. To, okay, but you know. I'm, I'm willing to fix it, but yep. I, need, I need the... Uh, the money from the bond. Uh, that, we, we'll get to that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's where we're getting. And, and, and I'm not sure, to make it clear, that just fixing the manholes, that'll make it so that the guys are happy to plow it. But I am not sure that that fix it, fixes it to the extent that it is acceptable as a public way. I mean... Well, what happened last year when we had all that snow, I had, I put in eight huge boulders on the curve coming in. Yeah. And the plow knocked them all over. Mm -hmm. So I went to the to the, the, uh, the plow the people, people. Yep. and explained the situation and they put them all back. Mm -hmm. But uh, and the road the road's good except for those two males. Okay. Well that that's yeah. something the the engineers and the DPW folks and you know, right now the current policy, I believe, is they're not plowing private streets. So you, you, you know, well, he that, has been. Yep. Uh, Shh, so, two years. So you've been doing. It's you, a grandfather yeah. clause, no. <laughs> you hope. You hope. Uh, so uh, yeah. So uh, is there, I, I'm hearing a recommendation that we release the. Get the performance guarantee of four thousand dollars. It's a little bit more. Than that. Second. Is that a motion? Ken? Yeah. Is it four thousand? Is that the amount? It's four thousand. Four thousand. So something. Plus interest. Okay. How about just a motion to release the performance guarantee in its entirety? Okay. This so moved. Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion. Discussion. Because when I was reading the um, letter that he wrote. Uh, I had a different view of it um, than what we're talking about now, and I just like to see where it says in black and white that it's just for the trees. Not that I doubt you guys, um, but when we were here in 1992, um, and I'm just concerned about repair costs that were might be taken on in the future. That was Reagan, truck, the tree people, Reagan. Yeah. So in the in the subdivision file, there's a. Uh, an indication of what the board voted the last time they reduced the amount, and the only item that they retained funds for was the, for the street trees. Okay. Um, I'm good with that then. Thanks. So okay. I think we're ready for a vote on releasing the entire uh, performance bond. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. So we got one out of the three one out in of three. And the other two, you've got a path to do it, but it's going to probably cost some engineering money to, to get there. Well, it cost me $30,000 to put in the holding pond. Well, if, if, if you can get an engineer that, that says we don't need it, then you're in great shape. But Maybe the hydrology has changed with the development. It, it, I don't know. I mean, if it's dry, you know, maybe it's going across the street, which is pretty yeah, wet. I mean, that didn't come from nowhere. Some engineers saw a need at some point. I, I, I think it came, the water that's across the street came from the backwoods, mm -hmm. which is nowhere, nowhere near the holding pond. Because you're on okay. a hill. 
Osceola is a bit of a slope. Does the water flow down when, when, when it rains hard and the water comes down the road? Where does it go? Okay. Down the road. Okay. Hey, there's, a, there's a couple of manholes. Oh, it goes into the cash base. Okay. Let's, um, let's, okay. Okay, let's go. Uh, let me get, get through a few things, and then, Roy, we're going to spend some time with, yeah. with you. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen, yep. ladies. Okay. Let's get all the cats and dogs, and then, then we'll, we'll, we'll leave us with uh, everything else here. The first thing is um, approval not required plan for school street. Mata, what are we doing again with this one? Oh, we have a gentleman here. Oh, okay. Oh, well. I'm Rod Carter, 15 Pleasant Street in Epton. I'm a land surveyor. I Rod Carter Associates out of Epton. Um, this is for Dick Amato on the west side of School Street, East Street. And the Upton Planning Board has signed already. And there's two mylars, one for Middlesex and one for uh, Worcester. Uh, the little piece of Hopkinton is here there's a there's two lots that he's cutting his farmland out and this is going to be dealt with later by somebody else um, this is the Hopkinton piece the town line this is where they're developing across the street at uh, whatever that's called across the street um, uh, West Main Street the mm -hmm. water tower here sure. Walnut Street so that's it basically is an A&R plan where we're it involves you guys, although it's not, um, you got to have 200 feet of frontage, and you only have 183.99 frontage left over in the Hopkinton side. So, so does that mean it's not a building it's all, lot in Hopkinton? So it's all going to be. It's all part of one. Yeah, all part of one. How does that work when you have frontage in two towns? They'll probably build in Upton. He'll eventually come to he'll you put again. The bedroom, he'll put the bedrooms on the Hopkinton side of the line. Just on the yeah. west side? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, here's the town line here. Yeah. And it comes over and then back like that. Yeah. So Hopkinton, Upton. Hopkinton, Upton. And can you point out where the construction is again? No construction. He's just cutting out his farmland that's there. Okay. Um, and he just included the remainder of it here. Which happens to be in Hopkinton. Which happens to be in Hopkinton, okay. yeah. The, it's not, uh, nothing is... It's, it's, it's entitled for endorsement? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Look for, for a letter to sign the, the plan. There's two plans. There's two plans. Motion. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion, seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. And we need two signatures on each plan. Although the one that goes to, I would do five because one of them is going to Worcester County and they don't have a record of really needing two. Okay. And we need a different pen. Dead one. Do them all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, a little bit better. There we go. Okay. The next thing we got to get done tonight is we need to vote to submit all the articles to the annual town meeting warrant. We're not submitting ex exact words. We're just holding places for them at this point. Um, we also have a couple other articles. So let's let's do the zoning ones first. All the zoning that we had as subject to the hearing earlier. Uh, putting those those on the map, which is. Ten articles, maybe we'll group them so we'll have a few less. <coughs> Did you get enough signatures? No. Yeah. Three. Three. Are there three? Three. Three. So who else? You three? Oh, sorry. Okay. I'm up. Sorry to interrupt. So basically, uh, look for a motion to put the ten zoning articles 
maybe consolidate the <coughs> the house the housing together and the site plan two together. <coughs> so we'll second. moved and seconded. Let's see how many of our do I have to wait till we get a couple more members in the board? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, God, geez, I'm looking right at my Me? No, I'm not really here. Oh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone staying? Motion carries. And what we need oh, one more. Which side am I signing here? Well, we all sign on the right side. The right side. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, other art, other articles per Elaine's memo. Street acceptances of a bunch of other older roads. The street discontinuance of Peach Street and portion of Franklin Street uh, no longer needed. Authorize the town to dispose of the land that was once constituted Peach Street and Franklin Road. Accept a gift of sidewalk easement on East Main Street to allow off-road portions of a sidewalk extension from recreational parcel to Legacy Farms Road North. And accept an easement potentially of 91 West Main Street for right turn on Lumber Street. Right now we haven't got that done yet, but we need a placeholder. Cumberland? Yes. Uh, accept gifts of land for Connolly Hills subdivision. Accept a gift of land on, on Hilltop Road. And so there's seven other articles to go for. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Uh, Roger Mesut and I are working on, uh, in response to Elaine's request, uh, a survey for the uh, planning board for town meeting. We should have that relatively soon. Okay, so you're working on both Peach and Franklin Roads, and yes. then also for the sidewalk on East Main Street. Right. So we can finish that sidewalk portion. Great. Okay. I have a question. Yeah, go on ahead. The street is continuous with Peach and portions of Franklin and Mr. Mezitz here. Um, is that that is not a, the piece of Franklin that is going to change Mr. Mezitz's address? Are you still going to be nine Franklin Road? Is it just as far as I understood it? So the portion of Fra where's the portion of Franklin that's being well now uh, I think I, actually I think what we're really talking about is the portion. Of Franklin and Peach that were being abandoned in the relocation. It was shifted over. Okay. Yeah. But it, it basically adds to Roger's front yard part of this. Right. But well, his, actually, his, I'm sorry. his home was a historic home and it was historically Franklin Road, and that, that's not going to change. Well, that's that up to the selectmen. I think they, they, they already voted to change the name. Um, that I'm part of Franklin goes, goes gets to Legacy North, I believe. Legacy North. So that. Old Singletary Homestead is no longer going to have a Franklin Road address. It's going to be called. I think they voted that a few years ago. Yeah. The, was that yeah, I don't down. know about the selectmen, but the town meeting had a motion to vote. But you're using the Franklin Road address for the house. That's what's still in my mailbox. <laughs> it's, it, 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 the, whether it's discontinued or not is, is not material to the name. It's the road shifted over, so it's the land where Franklin Road used to be. So, it's, right so what's Franklin Road now is the subdivision plan that the planning board approved. Right. It's shifted over. What, one of the things we're asking the town to do also at town meeting is the, the abandoned way where Peach and Franklin used to be, mm -hmm. we're proposing that part of that get deeded to us and part of it get deeded to Roger, mm -hmm. sort of a land swap, if you will. Mm -hmm. We'll get you all the details on that. Yeah. 
Well, right tonight we're just kind of making sure we have placeholders for it and we want to expect the engineering to be done in a relatively timely manner so we can keep going. If not, we'll, we'll pull it in, a, in another month. So anyway, I'm looking for a motion to add other articles 1 through 7. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, I'd like to add one more article that we should put add on to it. And it's actually a potential zoning article. And the only reason I'm adding it today is just as a placeholder. If we need to add expanded uses for the athletic parcel, example, to try to get the athletic or the uh, marathon center as a allowable use on that property, uh, I know we haven't created any wording for that, and we'll probably have to have another public hearing on that. But... Uh, I think we should develop. Uh, there is a meeting that Elaine is attending for me on Wednesday, to, and Roy is going to be there, I believe, with the town manager and the selectman to talk, and Parks and Rec to talk about that. We're trying to get a pathway so that there isn't a. Yeah, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, in uh, speaking for Legacy Farms, we would be very supportive of that. That's great. I mean, I think this board is, you know, when, when they pitched the Marathon Museum item, everyone was pretty much in favor of of that whole item. And uh, I know they got a good response at the selectments, but right now, it's legally, it couldn't go on that athletic parcel. So, uh, anyway, I'm looking for a separate or a motion to add that to our list of zoning articles. I motion that we have a Placekeeper article for the uh, recreational lot for the use of a museum or otherwise. Okay. We would need that language in March. Very, and, and, and I'm going to delegate that part to you, Elaine, to, to work on some de <laughs> some language. To <laughs> flesh it out a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. So, we've got a motion. Do second. I have a second? Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. Let's just get this other business done so we can get the rest of this stuff. So the peer review services contract, basically, I think, Elaine, put it in your package. It's been two years with beta. Three. three we're, and that wow. was a three-year contract, so it's time to, to put it out to bid one more time. And... Um, the services that we are in there are the same as last time. We just added a little bit um, of a paragraph in there so that they could do general engineering for the planning board now that you do have a little bit of funding. For that. And the other business, I don't know their planning board members are aware, Phil Paradise's ship has gone to another firm yeah. as of like this week or something? Yeah, just recently. So... So, so if Phil, we stay with Beta, we won't have Phil as our principal guy. Correct. They've already assigned. I'm trying to remember. They're still working on who to assign right now. Ken Ho is our contact. Okay. Where did he go? Where did he go? Uh, the name escapes me, but he's it's the a president small. of a, an engineering firm. Okay. Okay. It's a small. I think it's a. I think it's a couple man type mm. spot. But it's, it's a good opportunity. Okay. So, do you need anything other from us to send this bid document out? Okay. Um, approve the minutes. Look for a motion to approve the minutes of uh, January 11th, 2016. Are there any comments first? I have comments. Um, I, I, first, I motion that we approve the minutes. Uh, but I do have some comments on. on some of the things we have that conflict in the minutes, not from what was written, but from what we said. So, um, so you you you're willing you want to approve the minutes as written? As written, because we we okay. said one thing and we did another. We I'll did. point out where. Okay. Do I hear a second? Does anyone have any other changes to those minutes? If not, let's have second. a second. 
Okay. Further discussion on the minutes of, of January 11th, 2016 for approving them. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. Now I entertain a motion to approve the minutes for January 25th, 2016. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. And just quickly. Quickly. Uh, in, in the note, in the minutes, we said that we were not going to vote on the Leonard Street project uh, unless we had written agreements from, until we got written agreements from the neighbors, and we had never heard uh, from the neighbor to the... Uh, That's because they changed the project so that they didn't need written but, agreements. When they, they shifted it over... They shifted they, it to where the land from the came from the neighbors, and the neighbors never... The, the neighbors, happened. they, they did, redesigned it so they didn't need it. Off, off the neighbor, that's correct. Alex, whatever that's, his name that's is from. Right but we haven't seen anything from Alex except in that. And, yeah, it, it's and we voted on it after saying we wouldn't do that without seeing it in writing. Agreement. No. And it was a last minute change again. We voted on something without having all the information. No, I, um, I disagree entirely okay. on that because everything that he's doing is within the right of way, and therefore it was correct what we did. The original plan that we did, when you see that on that minutes, we had work being done on the neighbor's property, which required an easement. Sure. But it, when it sh they shifted the roadway to the west, that took care of that problem. But the road is barely wide, was wide enough as it was, then how did they get the extra space, the extra foot and a half, to do that? I don't... You, they they got it. Kind of have it closer to to the Alex's to the, property to the from Alicia's property. So if it's they on shifted the, <coughs> they shifted the road. There's a slight bend in it. If my memory is correct, go look at it. You'll see that the road is all on the right of way. They were trying to work with the catch basin that was on her property, but that wasn't possible. So they shifted it away from that, and it's still within the right of way. Right. All within the right of right of way. That's correct. So, all right. Thank you. Okay. Um, we we got a trails club correspondence. They were asking about trails on Legacy Farms Road South. Lane, maybe you and Roy can put a kind of response together for that. You take the lead on it. I think they asked two or three questions. I'd like to make sure we get a response to to the trails club on that. Um, then well, we also got a quote from Beta to do the engineering on the Lumber Street corner. And quite frankly, the quote was way too high. We will be looking at for somebody else to, to probably we'll, we'll bid that. I mean, they would given us a preliminary estimate of, I want to say, 10% of the overall estimate of the work, and they were at 30 or 40 percent, <laughs> you know, I mean, it was just like, what do you mean? I mean, it was just, uh, we're looking for something simple, I mean, but uh, they didn't, have, they, they were not pricing it that way. It's probably a good thing to let them know about that at the same time that we're sending out the bids so they understand that pricing is key to the board. Okay. Um, continue the Pulte public hearing. A motion to, to continue the Pulte public hearing for the to March 14th, 14th at 2000 or, or at, at what time? 8.30. At 8.30. So moved. Do I hear a second? second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, we did that. Um, let's see. Let's let's talk about the land covenants for the municipal parcel first. That one, I think, is all in order from what we're hearing from Ray, etc. Lane. Mike, I'm, I'm, I'm not confusing these. We did uh, email to them back today. Okay, so, and, and that is the form that we had in the special permit. Yes. So I think we're all set on on that property. 
Uh, any questions from members of the board? Okay, I guess I'd entertain a motion to... I had a question. Oh, go ahead. Okay. I'm a little late to this conversation. No, go. Um, is this a proposal to, for the town to get the piece of property? Yes, this, this is to transfer the municipal parcel, which is on Wilson Street, uh, which was part of the original legacy. Okay, so this is the... the no, this, this, is this, this, this is the... How many acre parcel? Uh -huh. 21 acres. It's kind of the rocky, wet stuff up along Wilson Street. Is that part of it's up uh, to the town. Trail plan. I don't think it goes through there. I think it probably could. Yeah. My only question might be for future use is because um, I'm Jane Moran um, on East Bain Street, yep. but I'm also a member of the Upper Trails Trail Committee. And some of the conversation from the trails, uh, from the you know, trails has been um, what if the trails do get developed or want to be developed further on down the line. And I know under the um, current agreement, legacies responsible for building, maintaining, repair, and all that. What happens to that part of the agreement if the town takes full ownership? Well, if we take ownership of that parcel, then we'd be responsible for maintaining the trail on that. I mean, we we're, or we're the property the trail owner. Or doing anything mm -hmm. like that. I, I believe, right? And, and, I think so. and, at, and at the end of the day, you hold the uh, restriction on the land on that. Is that how that one works? I, I actually, I think the restriction is a recorded document that restricts you from what you can do with it. It's actually, it was pretty well drafted by Ray a number of years ago. Yeah. So that one, that is the same as what we negotiated with the master plan special permit. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question would be going down the road future, instead of going and asking Ray, Roy for cooperation to getting some of these trails built, we would be then... Asking the town? You'd be asking the selectman for if you wanted to cross that particular piece of property. And, and as also far the cost. Uh, what? And also the cost for building and Sure, maintaining. but C, uh, uh, CPC funds, I believe, could be used for that trail. Okay. Uh, and then other trail funds, too, with, that are coming to the town. The... I just wanted to bring yep, that up yep, to make yep, it... No, 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 no all good no, questions, no, Jane. No, all good questions. Uh, as far as I have heard, I have heard no other municipal uses for that piece of property. I mean, at one point, Claire looked at cemetery lots, not going to happen. Uh, you know, it doesn't work for a school. It doesn't work for a fire station. Okay. It doesn't work for, I, I, I don't know what else you could Hotel, it's a good spot for a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably doesn't work so well for a hotel <laughs> off of Wilson Street, and uh, probably unless at some point we could move things around. I mean, I don't know how binding the current current the current covenant is that you know at a different point if a different piece of land adjacent to the athletic parcel made more sense and that turned into open space. Well, that it's, might happen. It uh, would depend on what happened on the athletic. I mean, this parcel. is. Oh, dog Doggy daycare. <laughs> you, you, you could you could put potentially an animal shelter on or uh, whatever we were, uh, uh, animal, animal shelter animal shelters animal I guess the proper I mean you know some dry areas on there. I, they would fit in with the coyotes very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, might, okay, I mean you know if that you know that might that might be a, another uh, depending on what else is there. I don't. Okay, thank you. you. Know. <laughs> None of that was restricted with your no. your deal with uh, Eversource. No, not at all. Okay. So, okay. So I'm looking for a motion to to approve the restricted land covenant for the municipal parcel. I think that's what I'm trying to do, right? Okay. So moved. Moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Further discussion? I guess I... I, I th okay, I'll give you a second here. A short minute. Go back to Lynn's notes. Um,
Okay, this is section four we're talking about. Uh, we'll talk about this one. You're okay? This is a covenant for the land that... Yes. Did you have a copy of that? Is that what this is that on our desk today? The way it's the Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's this one that's here. So, basically there's Ray saying he's satisfied with that. So, okay. Um, so we have a motion in front of us for the municipal parcel. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, for the the other one, that one's got a bunch of changes. Uh, I haven't had a chance to read it because it was on my my thing. But we just got it today. We just got it today. Um, I want to make sure that the Marathon Museum fits in the four corners of that, and I'm assuming that it does somehow or somehow. Uh, I had a long discussion today with Ray Mears with my council, and the clean document. I don't know if you have a clean one, but I give you two copies of the clean one if you'd like. Ray said this is the version that he thinks you should go with. He said that it doesn't address the potential for a museum, nor can it at, at this stage because of what's been currently approved by town meeting. He said what you would have to do is if you, if you approve this, we transfer it to the town, the town records it, takes possession, and then it goes through the process of dealing with if you want to do a museum, May very well have to go back to town meeting. For sure, you'll have to revise the mass plan special permit in order to achieve that. Okay. Separate and distinct from, <clears throat> from this document. Okay. Well, it, with all that, that's more complicated than I want to do <coughs> tonight. I agree. You agree? I can agree. Oh, Sorry, good. Tired. You're tired? No. Okay. Um, I'm confused. Let's put that one off. I want to talk to Ray more about it. Okay. Uh, and then the last thing we've got on here is the master plan special permit. Uh, Elaine, you want to give us a date for it that we can continue that too? The earliest it could be would be March 28th. Uh, at what time? Uh, it's totally open so far, so it could be first day. 7.30? Request a, a, a motion to continue the public hearing for the master plan special permit for the age restricted units to March 28th at 7 30. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone Aye. opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Thank you all for sitting through a long meeting tonight and I think we got a lot done, particularly with the article for for town meeting, and that's a key thing. The last thing I want to leave you with is those of you who don't have your master plan special permit done, or no, your master, the master plan, plan section done, master plan section done, you're late. Be reappearing on the agenda, and, and, and we're going to embarrass those that don't have it done by the middle of March. Not that you guys could be embarrassed anyway. This is, this is oh, and we will cancel tomorrow because we got through everything finally, and it did not snow. It is going to snow. Yeah. Is okay. So, look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Roy. Thank you. Have a good night. Take care.